I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, please invite your friends and today we are going to go with a new chapter of the Muhammadan stupidity. You see, what are the signs that you have true God or not if this God provides you with IQ? But if your God is a fool, what you can do about it? I mean, how the fool can provide you with intelligence if he is a fool? So I was going to talk about a different topic, but then I, you know, uh, uh, somebody <clears throat> he's almost leaving Islam actually I'm talking to uh, send me this video and you know we spoke about it already I mean this topic uh, but I want to put more light on this so this is the Mohammedans they have this video saying what did part a uh, man say about the Quran what he say about the Quran listen a little bit so we can love together. Back to my question. If Muslim scholars of the centuries from the beginning made dead sure that when they copied their sacred texts, they didn't change anything, why didn't Christian scribes do the same? Christian scribes did not do the same thing. Okay, and he goes on. You, you, you can go on. But this is not him talking, right? This is the Muslim talking. But look what happened now. The Muhammadan stupidity is beyond the imagination. Why? Because what they are saying to us that the book of Allah, which is sent to Isa, and the book of Allah, which sent to Moses, should be preserved by the Christians, not by Allah. Just to show you how stupid dummy this cult is. And the, well, this is proved to us that Islam have nothing to do with us. Because if this book is sent by Allah, why are you stupid asking the Christians to protect the book of Allah? Can you find me more dummy than this cult? If this is the book sent by your God, what's my problem? I advise the Christians when the Muslims, they say to you that the, uh, the Injil is corrupt, say to them, okay, you are talking about the Injil of Allah, so what's our problem? Your God, this is a proof to us that your God is not God. All those chapters in the front of us, they are repeating Torah and Injil, Torah and Injil, Torah and Injil, Torah and Injil. All of them saying one, one thing, that we gave Isa and we gave Moses, we gave them the, 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 the Torah and the Injil. So your stupid God, he sent the Torah and the Injil, and you are saying to us that your stupid God could not preserve the Torah and the Injil. Isn't it this is alone is a proof to us that the one who could not prevent his books from being destroyed before, he will not be able to protect his book, which came after. I mean, when when somebody go to work or apply for a work, they ask him for a resume, don't they? If we review the resume of Allah, Allah, he wrote 124,000 books. All of them, he could not protect them. This is what the Muslims say to us. This is not our claim. 
This is what the Muhammadan, the worshippers of the black stone, they say to us that this God, he have 124,000. Brother Sitar, Allah, he said 124,000. Okay. Uh, and Allah, he said 124,000 times. How stupid it is to say so. Right? Uh, look, look at this Abdul. Look at the smart Abdul. Just to show you that this religion is a religion of genius. He's trying to fix it. He make it more blind. Look at this. And this is additional proof that this God is a stupid God because the stupid God, he always provide his followers with the stupid answers, especially those who claim that they have knowledge of it. He says, Christian Prince, it says that the book given to the prophets, know these corrupted ones that you have, you stupid idiot, that would make any idiot. Where is the books? I mean, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So where is the books? Who care about? He gave it to who? The question is, are they those? Are the books of your God, Allah? What kind of God? He cannot protect his books. I have my books in Amazon. I challenge anyone to corrupt them. I am not God. I am not God. Your stupid God, he sent 124,000 books and he could not protect them. And you must just go make YouTube, make a scandal saying that my God, Allah, is a stupid God. He sent the angel and the angel is corrupt and you make a scandal about it. What's our, what's our problem? Go and give a finger to your God. Actually, why you want to give a finger to your God? I will give it to him. Here we go. We are giving a big finger to Allah. This is how stupid silly this religion is. If you're God, and that's in the same time, the stupid Muhammadan, they keep saying to us the Bible is corrupt, but the Quran says it confirmed the book. I mean, look at this stupidity. Confirming what is, uh, look at that, look at the funny, the funny translation here. It says in Arabic, literally, confirming what is between his hands. The word hand is gone. The word between his hand is gone. False people. Here we go, guys. Look at the answer. Look at the answer. Just to show you the stupidity again. Allah is not supposed to protect his previous books. Have you ever heard of a stupid answer like this before? Look at this dummy. Dummy as yummy. Priceless dummy. Allah brother is not supposed to protect his previous books. Okay. How come is not supposed who told you that? Allah he told you that. And why Allah is not supposed to protect his previous books, brother? And why Allah is supposed to protect the last book, brother? And as long as Allah he protect the last book, brother, can you recite for me the chapter of a breastfeeding for adult, brother? Can you recite for me the 200 verses missing from the chapter of Ahzab, brother? Can you recite for me the verses that God ate them, brother? Look what the stupid Quran says. لا مبدل لكلمات الله. No one can change the word of Allah. He did not say the Quran. He did not say. He says nobody can change the word of Allah. Read it. Nobody can change the word of Allah. The Quran says so. So those stupid Abdul, they ask, they are so desperate to the point they go to an atheist. But look what the atheist said. That I think, I think their stupidity is beyond imagination. I mean, didn't they notice what the atheist he said? Don't they? Don't you notice that the atheist you are asking for his help? He just admitted that the Quran is a stupid book and it's a book of corruption. Because this atheist, you are seeking his help, he said that Jesus was crucified. This atheist who you're seeking his help, he's saying that Jesus, he taught, he taught. It's not a fiction, it's not a fabrication. He taught that he is God and he is son of God. Listen and laugh at yourself. Every word he is saying, and you know, this is how stupid evil Islam is to the point they are asking somebody who don't believe in God. This guy, he don't even, he, don't, he, don't, he will not even piss at Allah. So you are so desperate to ask people who they are atheists who deny God 
to support God. I mean, how stupid is that? We seek help from an atheist who deny Allah to support Allah. How far the stupidity can go? So this is your friend is making fun of your Quran. He compared even the Quran to yellow pages. <laughs> Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of reliable. Uh, <laughs> Muslims believe in unreliable. <laughs> What does it mean to be unreliable? <laughs> Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. There's a lot of uh, interest, I think, from the Muslim community. And many Muslims feel that well, your conclusions, your historical conclusions of who Jesus Christ is, is more commensurate with the Muslim uh, idea than it is with uh, the Christian one. I, I wouldn't say that they line up well with the uh, Muslim view. <laughs> I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. Do you hear it? So when you make videos saying what this guy he said about the Quran, that's what he said about the Quran. He just said that he believed that Jesus died and he was crucified. So the Quran is a book of lies. This is what he said about the Quran. Because when he says something against what your Quran say, and you are asking him to tell us what he said about the Quran, this is what the Quran saying. The Quran saying Jesus was, was crucified. But this guy saying Jesus truly was crucified and he was buried. When the Muhammad and they say that Jesus never taught that he is God, look what he say. I'm not interested in whether Jesus was the Son of God because I don't think there was a God. <laughs> and so, my understanding is that your conclusion is that Jesus Christ was a messianic prophet. And here, here you see a donkey. Je Jesus Christ is a messianic. You know, uh, this, this, you see this stupidity. His name is a Christ. He just said Jesus Christ, and then the, Jesus Christ is a messianic prophet. Have you ever heard of a stupid? This guy he called himself in his website a philosopher. Christ is a Masonic prophet? Do even this guy knows what Masonic prophet mean? Continue. I think he, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he... See, he thought that he is a son of God. This is his teaching. So the Christian did not corrupt. They did not add any things. This is what Jesus said. Continue was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. So he just insulted the Quran again because he said that Jesus, he thought he is the Messiah, which means when the Quran says that this is the Messiah, the Quran is made by a liar. His name is Muhammad. And you stupid Muslims asking this guy to witness for the Quran. This is a priceless. I don't know what's wrong with this, uh, this YouTube. Even admins, their text is disappearing. <laughs> What's wrong with this YouTube? Even admins, I just saw Andres, the text is, go the text is gone. <laughs> uh, YouTube, very, very weird. <clears throat> Maybe Allah is playing games. So here you notice how far stupid, desperate, this cult, this satanic cult, it's called Muhammadan Islam cult. Everything this guy he said is against Islam. And they are making videos saying amazing what he said. Listen carefully again what he said. He gave a big finger in the bum of your God, Allah. Jesus really did think he was going to be. Jesus really he did think. The Messiah. That he is the Messiah. So when your stupid Quran say that Jesus, Isa is the Messiah, your Quran is lying according to this guy. This is what this guy he is saying about your stupid Quran. How many times your Quran mentioned that Isa is the Messiah? In this time. And you stupid Muhammad and you are asking that guy to witness what he said about the Quran. This guy, he denied that this guy, he is the Messiah. He just said he thought he is the Messiah. This is how stupid the Muhammadan are. Give me one Muhammadan, I will show you what stupidity means. Do you see how stupid? And the guy, he continue, and even he insult the Quran in front of this Abdul, and he compare him, compare the Quran to yellow pages he have at home. By the way, this guy, he was hired by Islamic University to teach Muslims how to fight Christianity. He made a lot of money. He worked in the Middle East. This is why he said, I have an Arabic yellow pages did you ask yourself why you have arabic yellow pages because he lived in the middle east and he made a lot of money from the abdul they hire him hoping that he can train muslims to attack christianity
the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Uh, I, I, I think that that's historically right. <laughs> you know, I think that all of this. Anyway, this guy, uh, 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 Borat, he looked like a crazy person. You know, you could like his his way of acting. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you can tell he's a mental issue. However, still, he's a, he he have some kind of an intelligence which is perfectly fit to give a finger to Allah. Perfect timing gospel authors I think all of them think that in some sense Jesus is God see so all the author he said according to him all the author they believe that Jesus is God they did not add things they did not take things that they believe if you think that the Bible cannot have any mistakes in it if you're shown a mistake then you just refuse to admit it's a mistake you think either it can be reconciled in some way or that there's something we just don't understand about it or you know we have and and <laughs> In the Quran, it's mentioned that this book was from other than God. They would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> so, no, that, that is my view. It's a necessary condition for a book from God not to have contradictions. It's That's an assumption about what kind of book God... But, you know, for me, I like that, actually. If there is contradiction, it's not from God. As long as Allah is the one who put that condition, we examine the Quran. In two seconds, we will find the Quran is the book of contradictions. It takes two seconds. This God even don't remember which one he created first, the stars or the mountains. Uh, Armin, he says, unknown gospel writers. Uh, Armin, I think you are a stupid mental. Get out of here, son, son of Muta. You stupid. Don't we say the book of John, you donkey? How that is unknown writer? When we say the book of Luke, how come that is unknown writer? Stupidity is amazing. I have my patient with you. Get out of here. Dummy. You are like a camel wearing underwear. Think that he have a diaper and nobody can see his poopoo. -poo. But your poopoo -poo is bigger than your size. Unknown writers of the gospel. Stupidity is amazing. So when we say the book of John, according to the book of John, oh, we do not know who is the writer. Go and see John. He introduced himself. He says, my name is John. This is who I am. This is my father. This is my family. This is who I am. And then he, <laughs> unknown, unknown, brother, unknown. It's unknown. Continue, potato. God could write. I know this is a, an important argument that uh, apologists use for Islam. As somebody who is not either Christian or Muslim, it doesn't make sense to me for humans to say what God has to do. It doesn't make sense to him that a human tell God what he has to do. But this is what Muslims do. Muslims are the most, or sorry, I can't say Muslims, they are Muhammad and black stone kissers. They are the most hypocrite people ever. When it's their God, they don't ask their God why he did that. Okay, any, any Muslim can tell us why Allah, he decided to be one. Why he is not two. Nobody would dare to ask. If he is one, why he is one? What if Allah, he decided to be seven? Do any Muslim dare to question? This is how silly and this is how stupid you are. And then when you question, when we check the Quran, we find there's no way that Allah is one. Because in the Quran, Allah, he says, if we want to take a wife or a girlfriend, we will take it from us. To say from us, it doesn't make sense to say that us is angels. Because angels are not divine. Unless the angels are divine too. And that will make the angel, Allah is one of the angels, and maybe he is the highest between them. He is the captain. Then we check, we find that Allah, when he say he want to take a wife from us, he was talking about the virgin who they are a human. So Allah must be human too. This is the yellow pages of Muhammad. And this is stupid God. In the same verse, he said many times we, and he said many times us. We, we religion. And if you change the translation, by the way, you will find the translation change depend. I mean, the Quran change. 
We, okay, Allah is one. Why he's saying we? No, nobody there to question. They say to you, Allah, he like to say we because he feel more uh, respected. So Allah himself, he don't feel like he's respected if he is uh, if he is one. Allah feel more powerful if he is more than one. <laughs> and then he says, if we like, had we intended to take a wife or a son, we could surely, again, he say we again. Look how many times we. Look, the, the, the Mr. We. This is first time we. This is second time we. This is third time we. We, we, we. And then he says, if we want to take a wife or a girlfriend, by the way, it doesn't say uh, a wife. In Arabic, it says that one, which means a female. We could surely have taken it from us. Does it say it? Hey Muslim, does it take it? This your Muslim translation. I challenge the Muslim to tell me why they put the word it. Allah is talking about taking a wife. Is she a cow? When we talk about a human, English is not my first language, as you know. But as I know that when you say it, I'm talking either about an object or an animal. So Allah here is talking about taking a female to have sex with her. How she became it? Do we have any Muslim to explain? Maybe Allah is the same as Muhammad. He liked to have sex with animals. The fatwa is very famous when the Muslim cleric, all of them, they agree that if a human, a Muslim, he have sex with a goat or an animal, his hajj is still valid. So you can go around the Kaaba, do hajj, still in the, at night you go and do the, the goat. Then he continues saying he will take in it, this female, from us. So how Allah is one and us, nobody dare to question. Actually, the Muslim even don't dare to ask how Allah, he lift himself up to the sky. How Allah, he came down from the sky. How Allah, he sat down in the chair. When it's come to our God, they question everything. This is how hypocrite this Mohammedan religion is. One of you, he just sent me. <coughs> this Muslim, actually. <coughs> I can see. Okay, well, he sent me this video. Says, "What do you think about this video?" He find it amazing. Hmm. Let me see. Okay, I share it with you on the screen. A mathematical, mathematical miracle. Let us watch together and see. I'm sure it's going to be laughable. This is how desperate the Mohammedan are. I talk to you about the biggest surah of the Quran. That's what I'm going to talk to you about first. The biggest surah of the Quran. Now, what is it, <coughs> folks? Yeah, this is surah number two. Surah number two. This surah, this biggest surah, number two, is made up of how many ayahs? 286, 286 ayahs. Somewhere in this surah, the ayah occurs, the, I'll recite the Arabic first, and roughly translate after, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Thus we made you a middle nation. One of the utterances in this surah, that's found in here is thus we made you a middle nation. Now what's the Arabic word for middle? Wasat. Wasat. The Arabic word is wasat. You don't have to know that. But know that this statement, this declaration occurs in this surah. This surah, was it written? Or was it delivered in the form of speech? Speech. And also, as a historical comment, it wasn't delivered at once. It took almost 10 years to be revealed. So this, this one surah was coming piecemeal. And while it was coming down, pieces of other surahs were also being revealed. And the messenger would instruct his companions, these ayahs belong to this surah, and those ayahs belong to that surah. But when the whole thing is said and done, Baqarah, the second surah, is made up of 286. And in ayah number, listen to this carefully now, in ayah number 143, 
In ayah number 143, the Lord says, we made you a middle nation. How many ayahs in this surah again? 286. And where does he call us a middle nation? In the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Do you see how stupid they are? Anyone who knows little mathematics, he will know that 143 is not the middle, you donkey. You stupid idiot. Who taught you mathematics? Who in the world who taught you mathematics? He said, where? In the middle. In the middle. Did you see it? But is 143 in the middle, you donkey? Is number 5 the middle number in number 10? No, it's not. Because when you say in the middle, it has to be both sides are equal. Is that correct? To make it simple for the Abdul, stupidity is amazing. And stupidity is my enemy. This is a line. And let us say the line have 100 line. This is number one. And it ends with number 100. We are typing in Arabic. Hold on. Let us change the color. <clears throat> And here is number one. So number 50 is not in the middle. For very simple reason. The middle is where both sides are equal. How we can make it something more to, to understood? If we make it number 10, not number 9, number number 100, to make it easier. What is the middle of number 10? Remember the middle. The middle. The middle is where both sides in that point is equal. So number 5 itself is not the equal number. Let us try to explain it more. Let us make here a little sign. We choose orange, let us see. Let us say this is number five. Here. And this is number five here, because we have two five, right? So to be in the middle is where you have to be between two numbers from both sides will make the equal numbers. So here we have five and here we have five. So where is the middle? Muslims, where is the middle? If you say the middle is number five from the side, then that number is not the middle number. Is it the first five is the middle or the second five is the first middle? People, do you understand what I'm saying? Five is not the middle. And especially we are talking about 143 so if we step in the step 143 we are in 143 and we are not in the middle yet
So to have the middle, it has to be between two numbers. And those two numbers will be equal. That is the middle. So if I say a four and a half, and four and a half, that half is where the middle, supposedly. But that middle is impossible, why? Because simply, if Allah is making it a miracle that you are in the middle, so should be in one chapter to be in the middle, and that chapter is the chapter of the cow, shouldn't be the, maybe this one should be in the, in the middle of the Quran? Is the Quran is a one chapter? In the same time, this guy, he said, that Allah, he put the, the Allah, he gave this verses to Muhammad within more than 10 years. And Muhammad, he told him to put it there. Do you see the stupidity? But because they are so desperate to find anything in this book, this book is the book of the turtle, a turtle who have no IQ. And as long as you are talking about the chapter of the cow and talking about mathematical miracle in the cow, well, what about we read it and we die laughing? This is the cow chapter. Why it's called the cow chapter? Because Allah, he resurrected a human being by beating him by beef. So the Muslim, they did not see the stupidity of the reasoning of the cow chapter to be called the cow chapter. They found a miracle that it, this verse is in the middle, supposedly. If we go to the verse, to the cow chapter, let's go there just to just for a laugh. From the first beginning of the chapter, you will see the stupidity. Alif Lam Mim, you ask the Muslim, what does that mean? They say to you, it's a miracle. Like, how? But nobody knows what they mean. So how do you know it's a miracle if nobody knows what they mean? And since when letters are miracles, I will make a miracle now. G, D, O. This is a miracle. Then they say, this book Wherefore, there's no doubt. Look, how no, there's no doubt and nobody was accepting it. Until now, nobody is accepting it. And then, and those who, uh, look, by the way, this is the translation for, the translation for five Arabic words. All of this is a translation for five Arabic words. Do you see how the book is clear? Look, look with me. Five Arabic words. How many lines we have? All what the verse is verse saying that there's this book, there's no doubt about it. So what is the rest? Because they're trying to fix the stupidity, so they have to add more, more, more words to explain the dumb Quran. And then he says, "Who believe in the ghaib? Have you ever heard of somebody saying such a thing? Ghaib? How how people they are reading English and they will know what ghaib mean? Is that a translation or a stupidity?" Ghaib mean the unseen. And then they do pray. And then they spend from what we give them. What does that mean? Nothing. And then look what he said. And who believe in the Quran and Sunnah. Hmm? Between two brackets, Quran and Sunnah. Does it say really there? Quran and Sunnah? No, it says what is sent to you. But you can let it Quran. And what is sent to people before you? The Torah and the Gospel. Muhammad, he believed in the Torah and the Gospel. So how he believe in a book which does not exist, as Muslims they claim? You see, this is stupid. And then we continue. It says, they will, dis they will be disbelieved. You tell them or not, but later they converted to Islam. So this is a false prophecy. He just told them, verily who, those who disbelieve, it's a saying for them, you warn them or don't, they will not believe. Did you guys, do you see it? Do you see it? They will not believe, but all the people of Quraysh later, they became believers. 
that Muhammad make Muhammad a false prophet. So the Muslims, they are desperate. They are looking for a verse in the middle of the chapter, and that is saying, we made you a, a, a middle nation. <laughs> but he just made a false prophecy. They will not believe. If you go read the interpretation, you will see talking about who? About the people who later became believers. So how the stupid God, he do not know that those they will believe. We just started the, ver the, the chapter, by the way. We are in the beginning. This is a long chapter. Look like every verse is a joke. And this verse here, chapter 2, verse number 6, is a clear proof that Muhammad is a fraud. For he said, Allah said to him, supposed to, you warn them, you don't warn them, they will not believe. But later, all of them will believe. And by the way, they will not believe and believe because of the sword. And look what he said, what he said too. Allah, he said, seal on their heart, you stupid idiot, son of Mut'a Muhammad. So why Allah, he send you to them, to warn them, if they will not listen anyway, and Allah, he set a seal in their heart. So what the problem? The problem is the stupid Allah. Allah, he set a seal in their heart. Allah, he set a seal in their hearing. Allah, he closed their eyes. Read the verse in front of you. So the stupid Muhammad, he, in order to explain why nobody want to believe in him, he says, okay, Allah told me, I warn them or not, they will not believe, brother. And Allah, he set their seal in their heart. So Allah is the problem, not, the, not, not those believers. Because how they can believe if Allah, the devil, he, he closed the faucet. Do you see stupidity? I have my Skype is open. If anyone want to go and call and make a comment about what we are saying for the free, especially again, Muslims, you have to be a Muslim. All right. My Skype is open. When when God, he said they will not believe and later all of them, they believe. That's mean this God is a potato. And not only that, he confirmed why they will not believe, because he set a seal in their heart. He set a seal in their hearing. They are closed from accepting Allah guidance. You see this? You see it even the Muslim translation, the stupid Abdul who translated, he says, i.e., they are closed from accepting Allah guidance. Closed from? What does that mean? And on hearing, there is a covering. Fast translation because it says Allah is the one who set the seal. Again, you change the translator, you will find totally new Quran as usual. This is a potato cult. Every one of them, he give you different words, different. Look, look how short it become. Look what happened. We just change the translator. Allah has sealed their heart and their uh, 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 hearing in their heart and their eyes. Abdul. Who is the one who sealed the heart of a human being from believing in Allah? Any Abdul can help us? Who is the one who sealed the heart of somebody from believing in Allah? I want an answer. Is it Shaitan or Allah? Any Muhammadan can tell me the answer. Who is the one who don't want people to believe in Allah? Is it Satan or Allah? Any Muhammadan? This is a book of God. The verse saying it clearly that the one who don't want anyone to believe in him is Allah. And the fact here in front of us is, is more than beyond the stupidity it says. Allah has. So who's, who's talking? Who's talking? Hey Muslims, who's talking? Allah has. Muhammad Hamadan, no way, it was self-defense. Listen to Christian Prince, their heart was sealed. What the what, what this guy is talking about? This guy, he took hashish. Abdul, those guys, their heart was sealed by who? Hmm? 
Their heart was sealed by who? Who, who? I will give you 10 years to give me the answer. Even if I put the answer in front of your eyes, you will not see it because you are a Muslim. Their heart is sealed from accepting Islam by who? <laughs> when I say this is the book of his stupidity, I have a million reasons to say so. And then, as long Allah, he set seal in their heart, and they will not believe. And Allah confirmed that in the verse before. So how later they believe? <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. And Abdul? And Muhammadan? Maybe, maybe. See, it is you Muslims who brought us here. It is you Muslim who told us there's a miracle in this, in this chapter. And now we are in this chapter. And not only that, it says here, their heart have a disease and Allah will increase their disease. How stupid is that? How stupid to say so. You see, Jesus, he said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. Allah is the devil. He came to make you sick. Any Muslim have a comment? <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? Again, Mohammedans, my, my Skype is open. Feel free to contact me, and I will be happy to hear you. Can you zoom out? Okay, let us see. Is the text not showing clearly? Okay. You, Christian, have a predestination in your book. I ask you to refer to Roman 9, 15, 16. Just to show you how silly you are, Mr. King, because, you know, Christianity is not a verse, and a verse is not you who understand it, it's the believers. So when you talk about our belief, it is us who explain the belief, not you. When somebody come to us and he quote a verse, I want, I want Christians and everybody, especially Christians, to remember that. Remember one thing, that from the beginning to the end, God's judgment on Adam because he broke his command. So if we have a predestiny, then why Adam is the original sinner? So whoever is trying to say to you stupid things, it's easy to debunk them. Even Jesus in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. He did not say to them it was a predestiny for them to do it. He says, forgive them. So the stupid you, when you come and you quote a verse, we laugh at you. Because the whole Bible confirm that from their fruits you shall know them. If the fruit is a predestiny, then there's no fruit anyway. The verse you quote for us is speaking that, well, don't think that because of what you do, the good you do, you are saved, but the mercy of God. And this is true, because at the end of the day, we are sinners. This is not destiny. The mercy of God. From the mercy of God, he forgive us. Do you know, do you know what the word forgiveness, you donkey? You heard of the word forgiveness? So we commit sin and we did sin already. So no matter how good we did, already we commit crimes on what the verse they are saying. Well, if you think that you are saved because you are doing good, we did already many bad things, but the mercy of God is your salvation. So don't try to quote for us verses and you fabricate the mean of them. Do we have any Abdul? 
What about Calvinism? Well, who care about this Calvinism thing? Because simply, my friend, judgment day is judgment day. If God decides to punish you for some time or decide not to punish you, this is not my business. People who discuss those issues, I, I believe there are people who have nothing to do in life and they are they are trying to kill time. You know, like the philosophers in the in the in the Greek in the in the in the old days. They meet just to philosophy and talk about uh, how the why the mosquito is a mosquito guilty or not. They find any topic to talk about. So if God wanna punish me for a day or a year, none of my business. Maybe God will not, maybe he will. So why you want to be stupid and go and, you know, like, do you know what God will do really? Who, who is going to decide anyway? What we know, that Jesus said, whoever believe in me and I will live. That's what Jesus said. I'm not going to go by somebody giving interpretation. We go by the word of God, not by the word of man. Man, he can say as he wish. So don't add things and don't be a philosopher. Philosophy has nothing to do with God. Philosophy is an art of playing with words to deceive and fool people. What if you are a person who thought, okay, uh, let us say you believe in something like Calvinism, whatever it is, and then it turned to be there's no such a thing. Are you supported now? What is this? There's things, there's things, it's not for you to decide. And as long as you know it's not for you to decide, it's going to be what it's going to be. So God is all merciful. We know that. We are sure from that. God is all justice. The rest we don't care for. So God will deal with me, base, and just. Our God is just. Their God is not. That was important for us. Do we have any Mohammedan? Hmm? How we refute Muslims about Joshua? Well, you know, what, what the Muslims first have to do with Joshua? If the Muslims have to do anything with Joshua, then Joshua should be in their book. <laughs> Correct, guys? If a Muslim trying to quote a verse from Bible, then we should ask him, why it's not in a book? And if he's saying that God cannot do miracles, again, he is being stupid. So in the book of Joshua, it says that the sun still stood. Maybe it's physically, maybe it's metaphorically, but can God make the sun stood? Can he or he cannot? Muslims are hypocrites. Can God even make the sun stood as time? in one place only without the whole universe. If you say he cannot, that means he cannot be God too. So when the Muslim they questions something in a book, they are will come, the answer is very simple. God is, not, the Bible says nothing is impossible with God. But they are comparing, I have to go with them here, they are comparing to our powerful God, to their fufu God, their God can do nothing. The Arab, they keep asking Muhammad tens, day and night, why? How come you don't have a miracle? So how come the God of Joshua, he can do what he did, and Muhammad, he could not do anything? Muhammad, his children, according to Muslim, they die, and was he crying like a girl? And then Allah did not resurrect them. If he called Jesus, just one phone call to Jesus, he will resurrect them. So remember, when a Muslim, he says to you, how did such a thing can happen? Say to him, why not? Isn't it? This is God. Don't you Muslims call God Almighty? So what I see sometimes that the Christians, you know, they don't think carefully of what is the question. The question itself is an insult to their God, not to our God, because they just admitted that their God cannot do what our God can do. So they are saying, how that can happen? <laughs> are, are you listening, my friend, the one who asked the question? Uh, 
Uh, another Abdul saying, why God want to kill babies? Well, God, he made babies, he killed babies. Here we go. The answer is very simple. But you're stupid. God, he did the same. Isn't it your God? He sent the flood and killed, killed all the people of Noah. Isn't it your God? He sent the fire supposedly and he killed all the people of Lot. Muslims are hypocrite, coward liars. They contradict themselves in two seconds. Right? Uh, Mr. King saying, are you afraid to put the verses I mentioned on the screen? How do you know it wasn't Allah that gave people Jesus miracles? What verses you mentioned? I did not see them, Mr. King. Secondly, what is the proof? Well, you are the one who is making the claim, prove it. Do you see, guys, the stupidity? Can you imagine how stupid don't work as a lawyer if you have a degree in law because you will be the worst because you idiot when you go to the court and you make a claim it is you who should provide the proof not the other person Jesus was 600 years before your Allah and you came 600 years after saying the miracle of Jesus from Allah prove it go ahead and we can find out simply in a very easy way if muhammad can do what jesus can do that's mean the miracle of jesus from allah name for me one thing muhammad did is equal to jesus just one i just quote for you that your prophet according to you muslims he have children's die his children's his own children's was muhammad able to save his children's When Jesus here is red people from death after many days, he's the guy is dead already and buried. Muhammad he have his children in front of him, they are not buried yet. How come Allah could not help him? Muhammad he himself he died from poison, which a woman she bought from Home Depot, cheap one, like four dollars a box. Well, Roman have nothing to do with this. You see the stupidity? What does have to do with Jesus being making miracle from, from Allah or not? Are you mental? Are you mental? What Roman 9 have to do with that? It says, Moses, he said, I, I you know, I, I will be mercy, Scotty. I will be mercy to one I like, and I will not be mercy to the one I like. Sorry, I, I will be mercy. To, let me remember. I will be mercy to the one uh, 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 I like. I want, and I will be uh, let us say uh, more merciful, the one I wish. That is not upon the choice of a man. So what does have to do? Would you clean? This guy is already he's, he have a mental issue. You just said that why you don't show the verses about Jesus, and then uh, uh, that he have miracle from God. And then you say to me, uh, uh, I ask you what verses you says Romans, what the verses of Romans have to do with the miracles? Supposedly you are talking about predestiny, you donkey. By the way, don't feel be insulted when I call you donkey. I'm just giving you a rank. Here we go, those are the verses you choose. Where is the predestiny? Do you see it? Stupid is amazing. Predestiny is somebody decide for you what you will do. Which means if I kill somebody tomorrow, it is predestiny for me to kill. It's not a choice. Obviously, you as a Muhammad and you have no idea what predestiny means. What does this have to do with the predestiny? The only miracle your God he was able to do is deleting his own Quran. I never heard of a God. He made Quran and then he want to delete his own Quran.
Muslim told me if a homosexual did uh, uh, intercourse in publicly, they will be punished. That is a lie, by the way, because according to the Quran, uh, according to the Quran, there is no punishment in the Quran for homosexuality if it's a man. There is a punishment only for females if they are lesbian. They will be jailed until they die. Never listen to Muslim when they say something. You know, this is a lie. Based on the Quran, the verses, you know, we can put them in the screen. If a female, she did that, two females. As you see in chapter 4, verse 15. If two females, they did that, regardless what they do it, who cares if it's a straight or, you know. Uh, then we have to jail them in their houses until they die. But if there's two males, here the translation is false. And if two person among you commit sexual intercourse, punish them both. This is not about male and female. That's false because there's a different verse about, about that. This is about two men. If you change the translator, you will see amazingly the translation change. Let us change the translator. We just change the translator, we would not change the Quran. Do you see, guys? Do you see that? Do you see the, how they lie? In the previous translation, it says if two men and women between two brackets. Here, if two men. Do you see it? People, do you see it? We just change the translator. We did not change the book. We just change between two Muslim translators. One is saying, if two of you, and he put between two bracket, men and women, we change the translator, if two men of you, we heard them, we go to the interpretation, it says you beat them with sandals. Do we have any Abdul would like to call me? If you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will see all the reference showing you that all of Mecca, they, they were homosexual. Muhammad, his family, his uncles, all of them. And this is all written in their books. Nothing written by Jews, nothing written by Sabian, nothing written by Christian, nothing written by Hindu. It is Muslim books. Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? May they, may they. Uh, open a challenge for the Abdul. Your God cannot do what our God can do. Why? Because your God is fake. And your God claiming that the miracle of Jesus is given to Jesus from him, that is laughable because how come he could not give it to Muhammad? And the Muslim, they say to us, oh, but the Prophet, he have miracles. Where we come from? And he says, the Quran itself is a miracle. Well, you know what? If the Quran is a miracle, then why the Quran is so stupid? And why the Quran saying, I refrain from giving miracles? <laughs> the Quran itself says, in chapter 17, verse number 59, I refrain from sending miracles. So if the verse itself is a miracle, how he refrain? Your God himself is a certified stupid then. Because when he gave this miracle, supposedly, it's a miracle. I mean, when he wrote this verse, this is a miracle. So how he say we refrain from making miracle when he was making a miracle? Have you ever heard of a stupid God like this? So you must and you keep saying to us, the Quran is a miracle, the Quran is a miracle. And then Allah, he write in the Quran saying, we refrain from sending miracle, which means all the verses we sent was not a miracle. Including the one in front of you. This is what happened when your God is a dummy. All right. Uh, look, uh, here we have a smart Muslim. I think this guy is the same person. He changed his name. He come back. 
Okay, no problem. You are welcome. Let us put you in the screen and make you famous. And girls will be in love with your intelligence now. Aisha. Christian Prince, imagine you are comparing Jesus to Muhammad. You think Jesus is God, and we think Muhammad is a prophet. You are comparing your God to our prophet. That alone means you are lost. You see how stupid you are? I never compare Muhammad to Jesus. I said, how come the God of Muhammad cannot give Muhammad what he gave to Jesus? And based on your logic, you just throw us two. Based on your logic, because you Muslims are comparing your God to our Jesus. Isn't it you Muslim you say our God is not a man? <laughs> when we compare, we are showing the differences between your stupid God and our wise Lord. When your stupid God, he ordered women to cover their ass just because a friend of Muhammad was watching Sauda doing poopoo. Your God did not notice that he should make hijab until Umar ibn Khattab, he said to him, Allah, copy my words and make a hijab verse. If you don't believe me, let me show you the reference. Here we go. Have you ever heard of a God? He copy his orders from the friend of the friend of the friend of the friend of Muhammad. Why Muslims they have a hijab verses? Omar. And not only that, Muslims they say, who can make Quran like the Quran? And then we find that Allah, he take it from Omar as he said. Read carefully. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari, 402. And here Omar, he says, my Lord agree with me in three things. Have you ever heard of God? He agree with the guy who is the friend of the friend of the friend of the friend of the prophet. And then what he do? He take his word as it is and he put it in the Quran. Read carefully. And then he says, and the Lord himself, he said the following verse. So the verse revealed as the same as I had said. Do you see it? The same what? The same I had said. And the Muhammadan, they say to us, who can make Quran? It turned to be that Allah is still in the word of Umar, Ibn Khattab, and the Quran is not the Quran of Allah, it's the Quran of Umar. Does it say that Allah, he sent the verses as I said? The Muslim, am I lying? Does it say, so Allah, he sent the verses the same as I said? Al-Bukhari is false. Okay, no problem. They can say Al-Bukhari is false. That's when Islam is not preserved. Because Islam is not based on the Quran alone. This is how stupid this religion is. Who is the one who made the Quran? Omar ibn al-Khattab. Who else? The ant. The Muslim, they say, like yesterday, we have a Muslim, he called me. And I said, who is the one who made the Quran? He says, Allah. I said, who is the one who's talking here? He says, the ant. <laughs> I said, what does that mean? He said, Allah is quoting the ant. Have you ever heard of a God quoting the ant? Allah is quoting the ant. Watch the video yesterday, just yesterday. Allah is quoting he is not quoting Shakespeare. He is not quoting uh, Aflatone. He is not quoting Einstein. He is quoting, quoting the ant. We have a God who caught the ant. Read it. Even the ants is making Quran. The chicken making Quran. Read it, read it and laugh. Chicken, birds, genie. I mean, what is that? Who is talking there? They say Allah. But, but, but this is the end. Do you think she was a Muslim and a prophet of Allah? I think she was inspired. I will tell you why she was inspired. Because the end of the words, the end she said, it fit with the words before it. Look, 
yuzirun, and then yashurun. Look, the ant she is making like a rabbi music with Allah. They are together, like you know, like you know, they just you know. It, the ant she said that. The ant she made the end word the same as the the one before it to make it like a rabbi music rap song. What this is a rap ant. This ant was making a rabbi music. Her name is Ant. She jump in the pant. Of Abdul. Anyone? Have you heard about tragedy happening in Pakistan? I heard. And I say to you, anyone who go to work there is a stupid. He deserve it. Why in the world anyone want to work in a country is called Pakistan? This guy is from Sri Lanka. What he is going to do there? This is a great example for any fool of you who will go to a Muslim country to work. Die in your country, work, be homeless, and never go to Muslim country. Don't be stupid. Don't go and work in Saudi Arabia. Don't go work in Emirates. Those countries have nothing to do with the human right. Those are the perverted leaders, perverted culture, perverted religion. So don't expect that you will live between civil people. Their God is Muhammad, the beast. This is the land of the beast. So when you stupid of you decide to go and work in a Muslim country, don't complain for what will happen to you. You deserve it. You choose. You bought the ticket. You bought the ticket by your hand. You float. You took an airplane to go there. That's mean you are a certified donkey. I will be homeless in any land and I will never go to a Muslim land. Why do you want to do that? And then we complain, here we go, they burn the guy. And I assure you, the guy did not do anything wrong. Anyone accuse him of something because he is a Christian. I don't know if he's a Christian or a Hindu, I'm not sure. He is not a Muslim. So they, they want to get rid of him. They accuse him. They can accuse you of anything because you are not from them. Accuse you, he insulted the prophet. People, they come like, like, like you know, savage, filthy. Don't go to those countries. Number one country in the world searching for porn. Go check Google. Pornistan. This is not Pakistan. This is Pornistan. You go there. You deserve it. You ask for it. Ant can't speak Arabic. Uh, yeah, this is another question too. Hey, Muslims, the ant was speaking to Suleiman in Arabic, or uh, Suleiman is a uh, no. The ant she was speaking her language. So how the how did how translation happen? By the way, ants don't talk. See, the Quran says that Suleiman he heard her speech. Do you see the stupidity? Go search. You will find that ants they communicate either by chemical or vibration. There's no speech. There's no speech. So we can say they talk, but not like us. They don't talk by words or letters. They either vibrate, they look at each other, buddy, you know, or by chemical. They are deaf. It says here, he smiled at her speech. This is a book of God. This is the book. It's preserved. My friend, he was a Buddhist or not. This is this is a great lesson to any one of you not to go and work in Islamic countries. So, is it this is the first time they do that? Why people are stupid? So just to get a better job, you risk your life. Why do you want to do that? Don't you know that those are evil countries? Didn't this guy see what they did to a girl in the park just a few, few months ago and they stripped her from her clothes? Just because she is making video for YouTube? And thousands of Muslims chase her, take off her clothes? Isn't it them last year they throw a guy from the top of the high building after they killed him? Why you want to go to a Muslim country?
so somebody saying in your book a donkey talk twitter do you like to call me so we can laugh together at my book uh, where the donkey talk you are a stupid idiot in my book it says so god he opened the mouth of the donkey which means it is not the donkey talking god he made the donkey or the sound coming from the mouth of the donkey god opened the mouth of the donkey but it's not the donkey talking however i have your prophet asking his donkey a four if he like females in your book, the donkey literally was talking and your prophet asked him if he liked females and your prophet, when he insists, the donkey, he was upset and he said to him, I don't like females because he's a gay. Have you ever heard of a donkey and he's a gay? I have a cartoon about it with the reference from Ibn Kathir. And the donkey of your prophet, his name is Yafur. And not only that, when the Prophet of Allah died, the donkey was the first person to commit suicide. Go check the reference. He felt so sad and he decided to kill himself. I have a cartoon about it. You can search it on YouTube. Sunni book is not your book? Are you a Shia? In your, in your, in your book, Shia is, is more stupid. According to you, Shia, the, 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 the watermelon takes Shahada. If the watermelon is uh, uh, sweet, she is Shia. If she is not a sweet, she is Sunni. Do you want me to show your books? According to your Shia books, if you are wearing black shoes, your penis will never work. You have to work yellow, you have to to have a, a, a yellow shoes. According to your Imam the Shia, the highest Imam, the son of Muhammad, supposedly, if you look at your wife Anus, your son will come, will be born mute. Do you want me to show you reference? Do you like to call me and we can read together? Did you look at your wife Anus before? Supposed to, he is not a Sunni, you know, see, like he's better, you know. How many languages your Imam al Hussein he speak? 70 million languages? 70 million, are you sure not 69? Only 70 million? I mean, this is not much. I am not a Sunni, I am a Shia. You are the most dumb, the same as the Sunni. If I open your books, people will die laughing. According to the Shia, all Muslim Sunni are homosexual. Why? Because when they are born, because of a Shia, Shaitan, he put his finger in their anus. I even can find you the video right now in YouTube. This is your Shaykh teaching in YouTube. Like suppose that he is a Shia, he is a smarter. Let me actually, let me find the video, hold on. You ask for it, have fun. Oh, hold on! I found a new, I, I found a new, uh, a new video. Why the the White House is called the White House? Let me see this one. This is a new one. I did not see this one. I didn't know where this is coming. الآن هذه الظاهرة موجودة. Okay. والخطيب الذي يريد طريقا سريعا لل للشهرة ولذياع الصيت يستخدم هذا الأسلوب أنه يأتي على من بره بأعجيب وحكاية غرائب وكذا. وما أدري تدرون ليش سموا البيت الأبيض بيت أبيض uh -huh. تتحملون لو ما تتحملون It's supposed he's making fun of the Sunni Do you know why the White House was called the White House? Okay tell us إذا تتحملون أقول لكم If you can hand it I will tell you إذا ما تتحملون If you cannot hand it I will not tell you ما أقول لكم هذه طبعا ال ال <تصفيق> 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 
اوكي تلعب سوا هاي طبعا هذا شوف هذه المقدمه ماكو هذه ضروريه حتى اللي نايم يقوم اوكي تيل اس واي ذا وايت هاوس از كولد ذا وايت هاوس فور يو نو جيف اس ذا انسر ادري شنو ينتبه اللي ما ادري كذا هذه لازم هل المقدمه مهمه اها فهذه اعجوبه والله شلون كانت غايبه عن ذهن ان هي سين هاو ذيس از ذيس از ا ميراكل هاو كان وي دو نوت فايند اوت ابوت ات انت ناو هو يا بسموه البيت الابيض عناد على الله دي كول ات ذا وايت هاوس ان ذا اوبوزيشن اوف الله This is the reason the American they call the White House just to, to oppose Allah. Why? How is that? ليش؟ Why? لأنه إحنا عندنا البيت الأسود. Because we have the Black House, so they decide to call the House of Trump the White House. <laughs> Muslims, you know, Muslims, the religion of conspiracy. So the White House was called White House. Because they are opposing Allah because Allah his house is black. True story. Let us see if we can find the one. Uh, I don't know which one is the one which uh, about about uh, the Sunni are homosexual. And Allah, He places His finger in. Uh, sorry, Shaitan, He places His finger in the anus. I made a video about it actually before. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> let us see this one. I'm trying to find which video I know. Uh, this one is not. Maybe this one. I mean, I wish you guys would speak Arabic. You would die laughing. All the videos, especially Shia videos, is more like more really, more weird. Okay, but I don't know. I need to find it. Anyway, <clears throat> do we have any Muhammadan wanna call us? Who is a Muhammadan? He believe really he have a true God and true religion. Who is a Muhammadan? He think his religion is a true religion. Hmm. Is the waist that has Lakbat priest, Iqbat? What Iqbat priest mean? I don't know. Leading your church? Stop projecting. We have none. In your our deen. Well, first of all, you stupid Abdul. The first one, Muhammad, he taught him it was a priest. Let us get you busted. Here we go. Let's put in the screen. I don't know if you are a Muslim, really. I think you are. You, are you making fun of your religion? If you are a truly Muslim, I don't know you, what you are saying. It's like you are trying to help me somehow to expose Islam. Isn't it the first one who told your prophet that he is a prophet, is a priest, king? I want the answer from you. What do you think, guys? Is it true that the first one he told Muhammad that he is a prophet? Muhammad do not know. Muhammad is a stupid fool. He have no idea. He do not know how to read, how do not know how to write. Even he do not know how to clean his ass. I'm waiting for your answer. Is it true that when your prophet happened to become a prophet, still he do not know? A priest told him, oh, you become a prophet, Muhammad. Are you there? And not only that, when the priest died, Muhammad tried to commit suicide. Was the priest leading Muhammad? Obviously, yes. Potato. Potato, 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 pot
to run to them the skin a light to them one in and not Muhammad not only you know he was uh, supposed to enter the control of a priest the man he was desperate to the point he died Uh, Twitter, I don't have time for a stupid talk. You want to you wanna prove me? Okay, Twitter. As long as your name is Twitter, you can uh, tweet, right? So, do you like to call me? And I will show you the, the Shia books. So, don't post this again. Otherwise, I will, I will block you. Don't be stupid, silly. It takes us a second to open your books. Nothing more. So, either you are a man or you are a Twitter. Are you a man or a Twitter? I guess you are a Twitter. You've never been a man. Like your prophet. Your prophet, he pissed like a woman. Why? Because obviously he don't have anything to push the water far away. Otherwise, I challenge you to tell me why he pissed sitting always. He never pisses standing. Actually, he pisses standing once. Because he was afraid from the scorpion. Any Muslim? Any Mohammedan, open it, challenge. You know, you see, we have a lot of people here. And, and do you know how many languages translate my videos? So imagine the opportunity you get as a Mohammedan when you talk to us here and you prove us wrong. You can even download my videos and put it in your channel. You can show your mom and your dad, look what I did to Christian Prince. You will be proud and they will be proud about you. Was Bachabazi boys come from Islamic tradition? Would do anyone have it except the Muslims? You tell me. Any Abdul? By the way, if you call me and debate me, can you imagine what Allah will do to you? How much reward he will give you? According to Muhammad, there is 100 floor of heaven. And not only that, one of the funny, not nice things, not funny, beautiful things actually, Alhamdulillah, that the heaven of Allah, uh, I forget about the Nagla Seed here, look at Nagla Seed. I opened this page here in front of me, Allah, Prophet, he discovered, Allah told him that the Nagla Seed is a cure for anything. Anyone have a problem with you? You have a heart problem? Take Nagla Seed. You have corona? Take not receive. You are dying? Take not receive. You have heart attack? Take not receive. Neglacid can so okay, you don't have money in the bank? Take not receive. Neglacid is the cure for anything except death. I mean the stupidity. Any every illness except death is death is an illness. The stupid Muhammad, he heard that the, the they know that the Persian they use the neglacid in their medicine. Hey, as usual, he stuck with something. When he, some, sometime he stuck with the honey. Sometime he stuck with the camel urine. Sometime he stuck with the negla seed. Sometime he stuck with the uh, 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 ajwa. You know, uh, just to show you one of the stupid things Muhammad he said. If you eat seven ajwa a day, no magic can affect you and no poison can kill you. And the funny is that Muhammad, he was infected by both. I mean, is that funny? Muhammad, according to Muslims, he was, he was bewitched and he died by poison. So where is your medicine, Muhammad? Did not even work with you. Or did you stop eating seven ajwa, Muhammad? Hey, by the way, when Muhammad was dying, why he did not take Najla seed? Do you think he forgot? Hmm? And what is, by the way, I went to Home Depot trying to find what poison this woman she, she bought. I could not really find the, the poison. I mean, because it was so cheap, it was for rats. Because I bought I bought this um, poison for rats from Home Depot. It did not kill even the rats, you know. I mean, I don't have any rats at home. 
but uh, like in the you know those are uh, uh, friendly right they call them uh, what they call them uh, uh, right, you know anyway so I put for them you know they were eating it and they are like mm, and they are laughing at me like what the heck so I want to know what kind of a cheap poison she bought from Home Depot at that time for a few dollars and killed the Prophet which is protected by Allah why Allah saved Jesus from the Jews? He could not save Muhammad from the Jews. That is a good topic. What do you think, people? Why Allah he saved Jesus from the Jews? Because here Muhammad was killed by Jews. So why Allah he saved Jesus from the Jews, but he didn't want to save Muhammad? Any Muhammadan? Anyone? Is it you Muslim you say that Jesus Allah he saved him from the cross? Okay, the Jews want to kill him. Allah he saved him. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Allah. Thank you. Allah, how come you did not save Muhammad? Cross and Prince. First of all, Allah he did not take Jesus. Because Jesus he did not complete the work yet. Prophet of Islam, he completed the work. I mean, what complete the work? He complete nothing. What are you talking about? First of all, the Prophet of Islam, he has 13 wives, and that completes the business. Anyone he has 13 wives, he will wish to die. Me, myself, if I have 13 wives, I will kill myself. Is that Karnayak? I know you. Are you saying that Muhammad, he killed himself by the poison? Who's the prince? I don't say that. I'm saying, if you have 13 wives, you will kill yourself. So, the Prophet, he was very happy to die. Oh, okay. I was wondering. I mean, why Allah, he let him die because of a poison. But don't you think it's really harsh death? The guy was suffering. It says like here, I feel still feel the pain caused by the food. I ate a khaybar. Christian Prince, what the friend going to make? If Allah, Prophet, he said, the pain I feel from khaybar or the pain I have because of my wife. Both of them, they call pain. As an example, imagine you have 13 mother-in-law. How much pain you will have? Is that connect? That's make a point here, actually. 13 mother-in-law, how much pain that will cause? That's a lot. Exactly, and you are stupid. And don't call me again. I did not call you. It's you who jump in the middle of the conversation from the middle of nowhere. Because Allah inspired me, and I'm not taking the prophet, and I'm going there to defend the prophet. I'm doing the like, Okay, as a second, I have no idea what you are saying, but thank you for calling us. Uh, but hold on, it says here that this has cut my artery, and the Quran says if Muhammad is lying, Allah will cut his artery. Christian Prince, Allah did not cut his artery. The poison cut his artery. Yeah, but he says if he is lying, Allah will cut his artery. So obviously, both lead that his artery will be cut because he's lying, fabricating Quran. Christian Prince, this is not completely, and this is not true, and this is the father accusation. First of all, the women he went to Home Depot, as you said. So the women he are not buying the weapon from Allah, and the Allah is not of the woman. The women he did not buy the Is that like easy, man? I don't understand a word from what you are saying, easy. You said, and everybody heard you, it's recorded that the women who killed him, she bought the weapon from Home Depot. Yeah, she bought the poison. From a depot. First of all, Christian Prince, you are a liar. At that time, there's no depot. Eh? Are you sure? I swear by Allah, I tell you. Yeah, well, that's bad. Then I was telling people Home Depot all this time. Um, Christian Prince, who was in the one who going to believe you? Home Depot, no Home Depot. And now everybody can go on the internet and can take, and you will find that no Home Depot. Well, I don't know, Zach and Nick. I made a mistake. I think it was not Home Depot. I think it was Ace. Okay? Christian Prince, there's no Ace at that time, too. It's something else, you're stupid. There's no Ace Ventura, too? Christian Prince, you're stupid. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> By the way, do you believe it that Muslims, they made a video? Saying that the Christian prince lying that Zachary Naik is calling him. Those stupid people, they thought this is really Zachary Naik. <laughs> and not only that, they are saying this is not Zachary Naik, brother. They did not know it's me. They say this is not Zachary Naik. He sounds like Zachary Naik, but this is not Zachary Naik. I don't believe how stupid they are. Yeah. They are arguing about it. Say, brother, this is, yeah, sound is like, but he's not Zachary Naik. Maybe uh, the Christian prince, he paid him somebody, you know? Unbelievable. Stupidity is amazing. Like, is that Zach and Naik? This is not Zach and Naik. Is that Zach and Naik? I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. 
Okay, keep going. All right. So any Muslim can help us why Allah did not save Muhammad, but he saved Jesus. Hmm? Any Muhammad have an idea? Mayday, mayday. We are looking for a caller. <clears throat> hmm? Any Muhammadan would like to call us live on air? Anyone? Think about it. First of all, if you are a Muslim, Allah will take your side. And if Allah is God, he will make you win for sure. What say you? Hmm? Anyone? Are you worried that Allah will not say, take your side? <clears throat> Hello? Twitter, the website answering Christianity answered that Allah saved Prophet from the poison. He died three years after, not by poison. You know, Twitter, I don't know. This answering Christianity is a donkey, the owner. He is the one who said to me there's no black magic when the Quran says there is a black magic. And everybody laughed at him. But look what you just said. If you follow what this stupid saying, that's mean your prophet is not a prophet again. Because if your prophet saying I die because of the poison, and then your website saying he did not die because of poison, that's mean your prophet is a certified donkey. He did not know what he is dying from. Thank you for saying that. Do you see how easy they defeat their prophet? Their prophet says, I die because of poison. The Muslim, they say he did not die because of poison. So they are saying the prophet wasn't the prophet. He prophesied about what things will happen in the future. He did not even know what's happening to him. This is how, how, this is how they insult their prophet. You know, they have a low IQ. They don't know what they are saying. They are desperate to find any answer. Actually, this guy answering uh, uh, is Islam, Osama Abdullah, he made a video to refute me. Let me see if I can find it. Just for a joke. He met with six, seven Muslims, and they made a video respond to Christian Prince. I'll try to find the video. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hmm. It's not easy to find it. I forget what the title was, but maybe we can find it. Maybe I'm typing the wrong wrong. Is it Osama with you or? Um, let us see, refutation maybe. You will see how stupid when they try to refute.
Here we go. We found it. Okay. It was very, very little. Okay. And in the dry seasons, in dry seasons, it would... I said the water was scarce. Okay. It was very, very little. Okay. And in the dry seasons, in dry seasons, it would be very difficult to find it. Okay. And second, uh, about me claiming that I'm a scholar... Well, actually, I never claimed that. In fact, if you listen to the very beginning of the debate, uh, he said that I claim I'm a scholar, and I responded to him by saying, I am not a scholar. I never claim to be a scholar, but rather I am a truth seeker. Okay, I'm always learning, and I am never claim to be a You know, when you see a Muslim making tons, tons, tons of videos to refute me, but they don't dare to call me, that is a clear sign of a defeat. You know, as long as the debate was so good, why do you need to make videos to explain what happened in the debate? You know what I mean? Where have you been in the debate anyway? I mean, if you can answer me, you answer me in the debate, not 10, not 10, 10, 10 years after. So this guy, uh, I, 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 this is not the whole videos, I think. Yeah, somebody cut it off. I want to see. I think he cut the, the bad part. Uh, in, uh, in Mecca and throughout this whole region, because it's all desert in the Middle East. Yeah, it says here part two, so it looks like there's a part one. Let us see. Uh, Part two. <laughs> Let us see. Maybe this is part six. What is that? Part five. We want the original video so we can laugh. Anyway, they admit that their prophet was filthy and he is full of lies. The first time this guy, he come to me, he says to me, Christian Prince, do you know that Christian people are filthy? They don't clean themselves. They are full of lies. So I said, so you are saying the one who have lies is filthy? He said, yes. I said, so your prophet was filthy then. He was full of lies. The second he said that to him, he says, you are a liar, that's not true. And the second I showed him, he said, at that time, uh, lies was very normal for everybody. Oh. Let us see. Uh, no, I know, I'm trying just to find it. Hmm. And sometimes you can find those things easy. Sometimes it, you know, you need to find the exact. Uh... The exact verses. The exact name, actually, title. I mean, <clears throat> uh, part one. Maybe this one. Let's see. Maybe this part one. We will hear an audio rebuttal uh -huh, to some of the lies uh -huh. that Christian Prince raised against Islam during my debate with him, okay. which consists of the following seven points. Mm -hmm. uh, the first point, was the body of the water really a well or was it a stream of water? Mm -hmm. Point number two, ample uh, provided ample scientific quotes from the United States government's Department of Energy mm -hmm and wikipedia.org uh, website, which is a scientific website, uh -huh. proving that soil filters water from bacteria and microbes. Uh -huh. I provided that with ample scientific quotes. Yeah. Uh, point number three, the Islamic standards. I've demonstrated the Islamic standards on cleanliness of water. Uh, if the smell, taste, and color of the water aren't, uh, are not altered, then the water remains pure. I have uh, also proven that the water that the Prophet of Islam drank fit uh, those standards. Uh, point number four, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was clean and even cleaned the lice from himself. <laughs> Did you hear it, Muslims? The Prophet was clean and even he cleaned the lice from himself. <laughs> Supposedly, this is 
after studying the case. He's refuting me, proving that prophet was clean. The prophet was clean and even he cleaned the lies from himself. Do you see how clean he is? And he provides scientific evidence. The hadith says that this is a stinky water. Even it says the color changed. And it says, well, he said, this is not well, this is a stream of water. <laughs> this is a well. <laughs> and the well is, is obviously, you know, the, the, the water in the well is not really from, it's not really even a well. It's like a, it's like a jacuzzi. It's a dirty water. So maybe in the old days, it used to be a well, like in a low spot in the ground. But obviously, the, this is the sewage. But the funny is that they met together, five or six Muslims, and they come with the conclusion to prove me wrong about their prophet being clean. The prophet is clean and he cleaned himself from lice. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was clean and even cleaned the lice from himself. See? Uh, point number five, I've exposed Christian Prince's lies on the water of Zemzem, uh -huh. for it is only a small stream of water and not a large one, mm -hmm. as uh, Christian Prince lied. Hmm. Uh, the Saudi Arabian uh, government today provides water to its people, uh, uh, whether the two million people who currently live in Mecca and Medina, this number according to him. Yeah, Allah cannot provide water to the people of Mecca, so Allah, you know, his miracle is not working. So what happened? The Saudi government, they bring water, so people of Mecca, they will not die. <laughs> I don't know if this number is true or not, but anyway, it provides the water, the fresh drinkable water to them from uh, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf. Basically, they have uh, special uh, processing plants that uh, take water from the sea and uh, filter uh, and, and clean out the salt, process the water, and turn it into clean and drinkable water. Uh, this is where the Meccans of today get their water. The stream of Zemzem is not big enough to take care of all of them. Uh, point number six, exposing Christian Prince's lies on the bewitchment of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, I've also demonstrated how Jesus suffered, quote, suffered, suffered, end quote, and had evil desires. He's quoting, by the way. This is quote. Suffer and quote. So, listen, listen. Suffer and quote, and he suffer and quote, evil desire. The Bible says, suffer and evil desire. <laughs> Sons of Muta. That's according to his... New Testament hmm. in him during his 40 days of temptation from Satan hmm. the temptation was so bad uh -huh. and so heavy on Jesus that angels had to quote attend him uh -huh. to help him from the quote suffering and quote evil desires a quote evil desire you must have anyone can show me where it says he is it was suffering from evil desire and Abdul well, a bunch of son of Muta quote huh why you don't quote the verse? Anyway, continue. Sure, we can love. End quote. There's no video to show you. There's nothing. It's just a, it's just an audio. That he had uh, from Satan. Um, you know, Jesus was losing his mind, according to the Bible, yeah, and, and he, was he needed mind. the angels to attend him mm -hmm. uh, to end the suffering and the evil desires that he had from Satan exactly. for 40 days. Mm -hmm. So I've exposed Christian Prince on that, and I've demonstrated that. He could not expose me on that when he was talking to me this potato he exposed me by making a video later all those who make videos later obviously they could not do good when they were talking to me where you been when i give you two hours three hours talking to you you may i made you shish kebab that from the bible's new testament and point and point number seven uh, Jesus and Paul did not care at all about body cleanliness mm -hmm. and they even allowed their followers to eat dead and rotten animals. Jesus and his followers, they eat dead and rotten animals. True. Okay. I've also demonstrated, demonstrated that thoroughly uh -huh. from the New Testament. Right. Hmm. From the commentary right now, okay, just to prove that you are a liar again, once more. Okay, here we go. Let me uh, do it. The uh, the water, the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, was doing ablution, wudu, from from the water. Okay, because the Prophet was not saying that uh, it's okay to drink from the water. The Prophet was saying the the Prophet the Prophet was not drinking from the water. He was doing ablution from the water. Mm. Uh huh. 
Yeah, this is actually not the original video. I don't know. I could not find the original video. The original video is more funny. They 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 cut and add things. Um. Hey Muslims, your prophet was doing evolution from the will of Bidra, where garbage was thrown on. Was he drinking or not? Hmm? Any Muslim? That is that fixed the problem? If he wasn't drinking? He was just jumping in water, have dead dogs, and win blood from period. And this potato, he says that he provide from the government of USA website that the, the ground will filter the water. But this is not a water coming from the ground. Even here it says the water color changed. Do you see it? And I saw the color of the water in this well had changed. Do you see it? Hmm. Your corrupt book says Jesus, Jews are prophet killers. Luke, your Jesus God failed to protect the prophets. Uh, that's very stupid of you to say so. Uh, I will go with your logic just for a second. And I will ban you after that Twitter because I don't have time for kids. I think you are you are, you are uh, retarded. You are just trolling here. <clears throat> your corrupt book says the Jews are prophet killers between two brackets look why your Jesus God failed to protect his prophets well as you see my God never failed because my Jesus is alive and death will not affect them even the Bible says when Jesus resurrected he was wrecked to heaven. He took all the saints, the dead saints, with him. So how you can be victorious more than that? However, idiot, it's your Quran says that the Jews killed prophets. So how come your God could not protect them? Here we go. You are stupid like your prophet. Chapter 5, verse number 17. So I can give you the question now. How come your stupid God could not protect the prophets of God? Do you see it? Do you see it, Abdul? You said your corrupt book, your God could not protect his prophets. You said that, not me. Which means, if this God have such a story in his book, that means this book is corrupt, and all this God, he is not true God. This is your logic, I'm using it. Isn't it, this is you who said that? Your corrupt book says Jews are prophet killers. Why your Jesus God failed to protect his prophets? Here we go. You are just a monkey. This is why none of you dare to call me, because I can whip the floor with your nose in two seconds. Any Abdul? Any half Abdul, as long as there's no Abdul. And by the way, this verse presents big problem. Do you know why? Ask any Muslim now to tell us what is the name of the prophet the Jews they killed. Hey Muslim, can you tell us the name of the prophet the Jews killed? If Asa wasn't killed, who is the Jews they killed? Because it did not say you try to slay. Some they killed, not even one. Some they killed, some. They accused him to be liars. Who is the Muslim can help us to give us the names of the some Jews, prophet of the Jews, who were killed by the Jews? Anyone? 
who is a Muslim can help us to tell us in your Quran it says that the Jews they killed prophets many prophets as you see some some it's not one not two some have to be three and more what is the names of those prophets who have been killed by the Jews and in Muhammadan and as long as the Jews they can kill prophets how come they could not kill Jesus and in Muhammadan And why Allah did not save those prophets, but he saved Jesus. And as you see here, Muhammad himself, he was killed by the Jews. A woman she bought. I'm, I'm not going to use the word Home Depot because Zachary and I got me busted with that. I will say Walmart now, okay? So, you know, uh, the woman she bought poison from Walmart for three dollars, maybe two, maybe 99 cents, you never know, from dollar store, maybe from dollar store, okay? Chinese product, you know? She go to that actually anywhere it's just Chinese anyway. So you go to the store, you buy a poison for rat for 99 cents. She put it in the foot of Muhammad, Muhammad, uh, you know, and then yeah. And then when the Muslim they says Allah saved him, that's very funny to be saved for four years under pain, horrible pain. You know, when Muhammad he ate the poison, uh, the Muslims they made a hole in his neck. So they bleed him out. They bleed him out. And uh, this is why the story, it says that a, a person, he drunk the blood of Muhammad. Can you believe it? How savage they are. They drunk not only, like I understand they suck the blood from his neck, so he will not die. Uh, why you why would be worried about uh, him to die anyway? He will not die, you know. Well, is not Allah will protect him. Uh, yeah, answer your question. Get lost. Get out of here. My, my Lord, he will not protect the prophets for a very simple reason, because if Jesus himself was killed, your donkey, so why he will protect the prophets from being killed? You are a certified idiot. This is the king of the kings. Himself is on the cross. So prophets are not better. You are just an idiot. Any Abdul? Everything in the Quran is a copy from somewhere else. And the verse before it says, those who believe in the Quran and those who they are Jews and Christians, they go to heaven. Stupid religion. Look at this donkey. Uh, yeah, you can call me now if you want. Al Arifa. You can call and you can be the translator. Even though I don't like this translating thing, but you know, it's okay. As long as we don't have customers. Text me in Skype and call. Be sure that your friend is, you know, he joined the conversation. Just be sure you give it an accurate translation for both sides. And by the way, Sabian are people who worship stars. So how Sabian they will go to heaven? At that moment, Muhammad, the perverted man, he is trying to make anyone accept him. If Muhammad, you know, if, if Muhammad exists today, he will say the Mormon will go to heaven, Jehovah will go to heaven, uh, uh, the Satan worshiper will go to heaven, everybody will go to heaven, just accept that I am a prophet. Any Abdul? If the one is challenging the Muhammadan to call is an American who knows nothing about Islam, you will see the Muslims calling like crazy. Here we have to beg for one. May they, may they. Who is a Muhammadan would like to call us? Anyone? Yesterday it was more fun. We have some callers, and one of them, his name is Jihad. He said, Christian Prince, you kept repeating the same thing. You say nothing new. So I said, Okay, this thing I just said in the screen. Have you heard it before? He said, No. 
So what about last time? Each time this donkey, he called me, he said to me, I never heard this before. And yet he said to me, you are repeating the same thing. <laughs> this is the same guy. When we ask him why Allah he made a surgery for Muhammad, he says he find that he found that Muhammad need adjustment. <laughs> the same guy, remember? Jihad. When we show him the hadith about the plastic surgery for the chest of Muhammad where they install a dish of wisdom in his chest, he said Allah decided to do it just you know adjustment. Oh, okay. That's that's nice. I mean, this is the only prophet ever. Who his God he found that he is so stupid to the point we need to do a plastic surgery and install a dish of wisdom and a dish of faith in his uh, <coughs> in his nerves in his uh, uh, veins sorry uh, yeah in, in, in the blood uh, here we go this is the this is the hadith have you ever heard of a God he need to do plastic surgery to his prophet because he's so stupid and imagine Muhammad, this is Muhammad who told the story after the surgery, and the story is so stupid. So how Muhammad was stupid before the surgery? How stupid he was? If this is a story been told after he had the surgery? Look what it says here. So Jibreel, brother, he cut open his body between his throat, not middle his chest, it says to his testicles. And uh, it depends on the hadith for sure. And he took all the material out the brother of his chest material. What is there? Any Muslim can tell us what is the materials? They took the material out of his chest. Ah, uh -huh, material. Uh -huh. Plastic, you know, global warming, you know, plastic, uh, garbage bags. You know, Muhammad was a goat, he swallowed everything. Okay, so they took the material out of his chest and a bondman and washed it with zamzam water with his own hands till he cleansed inside his body. Oh, must be a true story. I'm really impressed. Okay, and then a gold tray containing gold bowl. You know what? I'm glad he stopped here. Imagine if he say golden box containing gold, uh, 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 another golden box contain another golden box contain another golden bowl contain another golden dish contain another golden golden spoon contain other. What the heck is that? Golden inside. Okay, full of belief. Have you ever heard of a dishes full of belief? This is the religion of God. Your God, he installed a dish, a box. Inside that golden tray, there is a golden go a bowl. Full of belief. I want to take a picture of that belief. He must then believe. How Muslim believe look like in the dish? Any Muslim can tell me how Islamic belief look in a dish? How, what is that? What is the size of this dish? I'm assuming it's really big. I mean, come on. Muhammad inside is so empty. Muslims, your God, he installed a dish of faith in your prophet? And then the story continue. And wisdom. Wow. Not only dish of faith, dish of wisdom. I mean, come on, you have to make salad here. We have a salad dish. Some faith, some wisdom will make it yummy. And then this jihad, he says, well, Allah, he was doing adjustment to the prophet. And he said, actually, uh, if I remember, he said he was, you know, like making him have better IQ. <clears throat> what you distinguish to take but what's make uh, literally okay a metaphor in Islamic doctrine my pastor said we should respect their argument well your pastor is a donkey my friend 
your pastor is not a pastor because anyone who respect the teaching of the devil he is no Christian isn't it Jesus says who is the Antichrist is the one who deny the father and the son so how your pastor says we have to respect your argument what kind of pastor is that if you see your pastor next time tell him Christian Prince he say to you special message you are certified donkey and you are no Christian anyone he compromise he is politically correct is not a Christian period especially if he is a priest or a minister he is satanic the Bible is so clear Jesus he said to the Jews those are Jews those are not Hindus those are not Buddhas those are not Muslims those are Jews even the rabbis he said to them if you are if your father Abraham you do the work of your father Abraham even he called them son of serpent evil generation so who is the stupid pastor don't even call him such a title he is a deceiver coward so respect their argument which means insulting the Holy Spirit insulting Jesus accusing Jesus of false things is that what Christianity teach us anyone who teach you such a thing he is a coward and he is no Christian and he will pay in the judgment day in the front of the Lord for what he said to you and advise you to leave his church not to go there tell everybody this guy is a coward he's a liar he said we should respect the Muslim argument which mean the Muslim they can say that Jesus mother Mary she is going to be a sex toy for Muhammad that we should respect we should respect that the Christians, all of them, they are liars and they are enemies as the Quran Quran. We should respect that Muhammad, he says, kill the Christian, kill the Jews. We should respect that. We should respect that Muhammad, he ordered them to rape our women. We should respect that. We should honor it. Muhammad says, beat women. We should respect that. What a bunch of cowards those people are. Never listen to those garbage people. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Carlos is asking question where is the Pharisees does it say Messiahs would be called the Nazarene uh, first of all you know the city the city you Car Carlos uh, uh, when you ask a question obviously the question is not a question to ask it's just to make fun when the Bible is written the Bible did not write every single thing. As an example, does the Bible say as much about Jesus since he was a child until he became 30, 33? So there is a huge, long, many years. That part is not written. So if there is something is not written, doesn't mean it is not there. So you are a certified donkey again. 30 years of the life of Jesus is not there and that for a reason because the disciples when they wrote they wrote what Jesus did within the time they were accompanying him and that is the important the time of really when when did it say the time of Jesus to announce himself but we know that there's 30 years Jesus is talking still is that correct Christians and people are talking about Jesus still right so 30 years of people speaking and Jesus is speaking and it's not there and it's not written for a reason because it wasn't important what is important is what Jesus did for us and what he came for Otherwise, if they're right, every, everything happened in 30 years, we will have a books in the higher than sixth floor building. It's like asking me, 
uh, when the book of Genesis speak about uh, the creation of the earth and the heaven, should God write how he created a mosquito? That alone maybe will be 70, 80 books. Just a mosquito alone. Very complicated creature, even though it's very small. <clears throat> a Muslim says, if you read the Quran alone, you will get astray. Well, if we read the Quran alone and read the Hadith with it, we will get more astray. As you see, who in the world want to believe in such a garbage? Golden ball and golden belief put in, installed in the chest of the Prophet. Here we go. We are not reading the Quran alone. We are reading the Hadith. Uh, Abdullah said, the one who lost his teeth, he's saying, that my Allah, he said, Muhammad PBUH is top five prophet. So mocking my prophet, you only mocking, uh, making your punishment in hell uh, more severe. Well, Abdullah, as I know, it's your prophet who was punished. Because as you see, when your prophet says he died because of poison and the poison cut his artery, and then we find that the Quran said, that if Muhammad is a fabricator for the word of God, then I will cut his artery. So who is the one is punished? You tell me. The Quran warned that if the Christian don't believe in Muhammad, Allah will erase their faces. They will erase their eyes and eyebrows and noses. So we will be weird, we will look weird. As I see that this has never happened. And this is supposed to happen in the time of Muhammad. So your God, Allah warning, is a joke. I will give you another example. Allah, your God, he cursed the Jews, but they are the most rich people, successful people, intelligent people. So if a curse will make the Jews who they are today, I wonder what success is. All of you Muslims are signing agreement now to buy weapons of the Jews. Emirat, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, even you are buying their softwares to spy at each other. Those are the cursed Jews. So if the cursed one is the most rich, rich and you know, wealthy and smart and powerful, who is the one is lucky then? Please ask your God Allah to make me cursed like the Jews because I want to change my car. Can you talk to your God Allah to curse me so I can get a new car? Please call Allah. All right? Because obviously Allah, he knows best and he can curse you and that will fix your problems. Did Allah bless the Muslims? If he does, why the Muslims are running from their countries? Do we have any Muhammadan? My Skype is open, zero Muslim to call. Hmm? Anyone? Mayday, mayday. No, seriously, they say to you that Allah cursed the Jews. I mean, look at the look at Israel. Go, anyone go to Israel? If you do not go to Israel, you don't need to go. Just go to YouTube. Type Israel. Type any city in Israel. You will see it's 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 better than Europe. It's literally better than Europe. Way better than Europe. So those are the cursed, right? Your Allah giving you time? I don't know. Your Allah, he don't even have a time. Your Allah is a joke. We are laughing at him day and night. And one day I will die and they will say Allah killed him. Takbir. There's a, there's a Muslim. His name is Muslim Knight. Once he opened a chat room in Paltok. And they have a chat room every day open. But he made a special one to curse me. To ask Muslim to pray for my death. 
So may Allah kill a Christian prince. May Allah give him etc. May Allah make him have a, a train go over him. May Allah make a car hit him. And the Muslim all in the chat, they say, I mean, very evil people. Second day, less than 24 hours, I heard that this guy, he have attack, and I think he's dead now. I mean, he's dead in that time. But since then, we never, we never heard of him. Not even 24 hours after. The poor guy, he spent, I don't know how many hours cursing me, asking Allah to kill me. The second day, he have an attack, and they told me, people, they came to the chat room, they said, did you hear the news? The Muslim, they are saying that this guy in the, you know, in the special unit, like, you know, special care unit, he have an attack. And since then, we did not see him, see him ever again. Yeah. So feel free to curse me. That will be good. Religion of cursing and hatred. You will not see Muslims saying, may God for Allah forgive you. The only one who will say that is the one who is either too much hypocrite, trying to present Islam in a better way, or a person who is naive. A true Muslim, he don't ask for forgiveness for you. He asks, may Allah kill you, may Allah destroy you, may Allah, you know, etc. Any Abdul? You know, being healthy, not healthy. I mean, you are a human being, and uh, you might die for a reason. You know, we are born to die, but Muslims are very, very. You know, their hatred is is a, is, is killing them. Uh, if if somebody now uh, is a Muslim and he die because of cancer, I mean, cancer kill everybody, kill Christians, kill Hindus, kill Jews, kill him. did not kill him because he's a Muslim, but Muslim they were saying the opposite. Well, Abdullah, you are stupid because you are not allowed to ask the, the, to, to, to say me, Allah guide you to a Christian. This is against the Quran. But I will let it go because you are an ignorant donkey as usual. Your Quran forbid you to say me, Allah guide us. But what you can say? When the last time we saw a Muslim, he know his religion. You don't. <clears throat> you are not allowed to ask for forgiveness for non-Muslims. You are not allowed to pray for them. You are not allowed to ask for their mercy. Even your prophet, Allah, he refused his request, supposedly to forgive his mother. It's a very evil religion. Until now, how long we are here? Not a zero Mohammedan. Not a zero Mohammedan, but I'm not surprised. Cowardness is a good sign of retreat. Do you see it, Abdullah? So when you say, may Allah forgive you, you are a stupid idiot and you are not a Muslim. Are you there, Abdullah? Do you see it, Abdullah? It is not fitting for the Prophet and those who believe that they should pray for forgiveness of the for the pagan. So according to you, we are pagan. By the way, translate here is Mushrikeen. Mushrikeen is not the word pagan, literally, you know. But here we go. This is your book. Did you watch video? I don't know who is this person about millions of Muslims converting. I have no idea. For me, you know, by the way, even if millions of Muslims convert to Christianity every day, we will not stop doing what we are doing because the purpose is education. Education mean we are fighting ignorance ignorance is our enemy 
So God, he can make, he can open eyes for people as he wish, right? But we have a duty as a Christians to fight ignorance, not only ignorance of the Muslims, but ignorance of the Christians. Like this guy now, he do not know. He just told me, may Allah forgive you. But as you see, the Quran forbid him from doing that. He is ignorant. So we are here to fight ignorance. And that's why the Muslims don't dare to debate me, by the way, because they don't know what I will say next. You see, you can predict what any Christian, other Christian, he will say to you in a debate. Because you know that his knowledge is the same you heard many times. But you talk to me, just give me reason to mention something in you. I will, I will get you busted. It will take me a second. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, you see, but loving the enemy, some Christians, by the way, they, they understand loving the enemy wrongly. Uh, I told you before, you know, like we used to go hiking. Uh, a Christian, they think uh, because Jesus taught us to be loving, that's mean we cannot uh, have guns, we can't have swords, you know. They have a very weird understanding of the verses of the Bible. So... Uh, you know, when we used to go hiking, all those Christians, I go with them, they look at me really bad. I mean, I'm, I'm the bad boy between them. I mean, why is why you have a gun with him? What's wrong with this guy? You know, this is how the Christian look at you. What's wrong with him? You know, like he's like, <laughs> like he's like he's weird. He's not acting like a Christian, you know. And then one day when we are in the mountains, and it was a very stormy, ugly night. Uh, the wolves, they start howling and coming from every direction. Suddenly, all of them, they said, your gun is with you, right? You have your gun with you, right? I said, yeah, I have my gun with me, but I have only one bullet. They said, what? You carry a gun with one bullet? So those who are making fun of me for all this time for carrying a gun, suddenly they are crying for the gun. And they even hold me. I can't even, if I want to shoot, I can't shoot. Everybody's holding me, standing next to me. I said, give me a space. At least if a, if a wolf attack us, I can shoot. This is my pain with the Christians. Christian, they understand things wrongly. Jesus said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. But nobody want to read this verse. They only read for you that Jesus says, if somebody hit you in your cheek, give him the other cheek. But Jesus did not say that people can kill you. He did not say, Jesus said, don't resist evil by evil. Which means, you can resist, but not by evil. So, if somebody rape, you don't rape his wife. That is evil. Jesus said, the one who lived by the sword, he shall, be, he shall die by the sword. Which means, the one who killed will be killed. That is justice. And this is the same order in the Old Testament. This is the same God. Me, myself, I will not even consider a man a man if he never have an army training. I will never even consider a man to be a man if he never train himself to shoot and to defend his family. And this is me. And the Bible confirmed that. The Israelites went to war. Jesus, he have disciples, they have swords with him. Is it Peter who have a sword? Like all this time, Jesus is the one who ordered him to buy a sword. He said, the one who don't have a sword, go and buy one. They said, we have two. He said, this is enough. So they make fun of you about having a gun until the day they need the gun and then they cry for it. You know, it's not guns who kill people, it is what people do with guns. Right? Otherwise a criminal, he can kill by anything. He can kill by car, he can kill by a rock, he can kill by his bare hands, he can kill by a kitchen knife. You know, if a human wouldn't wanna, wanna be a beast, he can kill. Especially if you take advantage of the weak one. Or take advantage of somebody is not aware, like stabbing him from behind or hitting him by a rock or something. So it's not weapon. It is the evil inside you is dangerous.
Uh, ask yourself if Israel have zero weapon aren't they going to do to Israel and the people of Israel what they did today to this guy from Sri Lanka just ask yourself if Israeli army is not extremely powerful what the terrorist will do to the Jews in Israel? I think all of you, you know the answer. So Christianity does not teach you to be stupid and silly. Love does not mean you don't arm yourself, you don't have army, you don't defend your house and land and family. Love means to share the truth with them, whatever the truth will cost. Even if it's going to cost war. And if war happened, you stand and you fight. A dead hero is better than a living coward. Way better. Imagine you have a husband and then there's, uh, you know, uh, somebody coming to rape you and then the husband, he hide. He go under the sink of the kitchen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hariz Akmal saying, so you call yourself a man? You're talking to me, Hariz? I don't know, you can call me whatever you want, but I don't think your prophet was a man. According to the hadith, your prophet, he never been able to give his wife orgasm. If you don't believe me, I can show you. Here we go. What kind of man, even, even, in, even in bed, he is not a man. I mean, what, what's wrong with this guy? When Ummu Salama, obviously she is a whore, she came to Muhammad, she told him she was seeing a very wet dream. Do you know how wet it is there, you know? Come on. I mean, she lives in the Amazon jungles. It's very wet there, especially down there under the skirt. So she have the Amazon rain, and it was very wet there. Very wet there, you know? Uh, so she was asking the prophet if she can wash her private part, which is really wet there. If you know what I'm saying, brother. Then the wife of the prophet, she said, like, what the heck? Women, they have this charge? Do you see it? This is the wife of your prophet. Her husband, Mr. Muhammad Abdul, he never made her have this charge. She was only charging. She never discharged. Are you there, Mr. Are you a man? And look, the other woman, she don't have a man, but she have a lot of wet rain. Look, this woman, she don't have a man. She is just, you know, doing things. You know, you know what I'm saying, you know? The one who don't have a man, she was able to have this charge and to have orgasm. The one she have the most powerful prophet. She never heard of this charge. She have no idea. Like, what? Women, they have this charge. Imagine your wife, she do that to you in front of your friends. You know, she said that women, they have, they have orgasm. Hey, everybody will look at you like, what the heck? What this guy you do in the bedroom then? What the prophet was using in the bedroom? He was watching TV? Are you there? Now you tell me about the man, if you want. Feel free. Any Muslim? Any Mohammedan?
Sahaba I said ask to curse the the okay hold on hey, Abdullah again you are making people guys the Sahaba they asked the Prophet to curse a person he says I am not sent to be cursed uh, but I sent to be mercy are you sure Abdullah Abdullah I want to ask you did your parents get your seed from Walmart? Because I'm trying to grow some Abdullah like you in my backyard. Because your prophet, he was cursing even Muslims. And you are a certified idiot. Read carefully. Your prophet used to beat people, beat Muslims. He beat them, he beat them. He do what? He beat them. He beat them up. And he cursed them. And actually, it doesn't even say curse in Arabic. It says more. It says, Shatam tuhu wala antahu, which means I say the F word to his parents, filthy language, and I curse. Not only curse. And then he says, I ask Allah to make my curse is mercy on them. <laughs> you see how, how funny your, your prophet curse work? It's like a gas, you know, he, he beat you, it, it turned to be gas. <laughs> By the way, why the prophet was cursing and beating Muslims? Does it say and beat him? I cursed or I beat or I say the F word? Are you there, Abdullah? Abdullah, the more you talk, the more you make people. Go debate openly, brother. Don't hide behind YouTube, uh, uh, Kamal. You see, behind YouTube, my friend, I can go all the way to Indonesia. More than 200 million Indonesians, they are watching my videos. The best place ever. I like YouTube. What's your business? Aren't you in YouTube too, brother? Why well, you are in YouTube, potato? Would you share a bed with Donald Trump? Well, I think this is a dream of yours. This is why you think about it a lot. Because I'm not sure why each time you come here, you say the same thing. Ah, you remind me of Sheikh Uthman when he saw David Wood. He says, MashaAllah, you are six foot tall, huh? Ah, you like tall guys. <laughs> this guy, each time he come here, he say the same. Obviously, he's perverted. This is what the Muslims have. Look at the answers. Look at the stupidity. Look at the trash language. Who is going to debate us about his God, his religion? Did you share the bed with Donald Trump? What kind of camel urine you drank today, Omar Abdul? Did you get this question after thinking so deep or so shallow? Were you inspired by Allah or by Muhammad or by both brother? Potato. Just wait in the coming election, Donald Trump is coming and you Muslims will go crazy again. Believe it or not, Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia, they want Donald Trump to stay as a president. Do you believe that? They don't want Joe Biden because Joe Biden, he's under the influence of Obama and Obama is a Shia and he hates Muslim Sunni. And this is why Obama now trying to lift up the sanctions on Iran. Well, all of us, we knew that, you know, Obama, he gave Iran a lot of opportunity when he was a president. He was all the way their helper. Because the dream of Obama that Iran will take over Saudi Arabia. You know, Obama, he wanted really to establish an Islamic caliphate 
starting with the Sunni and to be in the hand of the Shia. The Muslim Brotherhood are one of the organizations sponsored by the Shia. Actually, the first center of Muslim Brotherhood was bought by the Shia Imams. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? Anyone? And you know, the funny is, Muslims, they don't seek protection from Allah. They seek it from France. Like now they are buying weapons from France like crazy. Weapon from America like crazy. Uh, thousands of soldiers, Marine soldiers are all over the Middle East, invited by the Muslims. Or Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Emirates, Bahrain, you name it. Why the Muslims don't trust Allah on their protection? Uh, today, the uh, I think Emirates they sign a deal. Let us see. I don't know how many billion dollar. I think maybe eighteen something like that. Scary number. Let us see. The news. And today, the the uh, the foreign minister of Russia is coming because they want to buy from them a lot of uh, okay, nineteen billion dollar deal. What they bought junk, because those Rafale airplane, any airplane anyway, any weapon you buy, those weapon they will help you for four years, five years. After that, they are old and they are outdated. Nineteen billion dollar of junk literally why because they are desperately trying to find protection after kissing the asses of the French people all the money you make it goes in a blink of an eye this is why you know once one of you asked me he said he's, he's uh, his, he think about investing, he want to buy a property or something like that in Emirat. I said, do you want my advice? Never buy there because those countries are cartoonic countries. Those are not really countries. Those are made by the Western regimes, by the Western even intelligence department, not even government. If you remember a few years ago, when things went in trouble and almost there's a war between Iran and Saudi Arabia, Emirat became empty, totally empty. There's tens of thousands of cars in the airport of Dubai. People just leaving, leaving their cars for free in the street. Just take it. You can search it in Google. And this is what can happen to this country in one day. If Iran shoot one missile at Emirat, 95% of the population, they are foreigners, they will flee. And this country will become a ghost town. This is the truth. Just open debate uh, openly, brother. First, I'm not your brother. You are a black stone kisser. You are a pagan. Secondly, this is how I debate. You like it. You don't like it. Get lost. Stop crying like a rabbit, like a dog. I don't. This is openly. Here we are in, in, in the Internet. This is the most open space ever. Internet. We speak to people around the world. And you are crying like a puppy because none of your scholars dare to debate me. What difference is going to make if I go next to you or oh, we are talking here? Potato. So never, never buy or invest in those countries for those are not countries. Actually, I believe that those countries will disappear in less than a hundred years from now. Turkey will disappear. Qatar will disappear. Bahrain will disappear. Emirat will disappear. Saudi Arabia will be divided. 
you know, people do not know the tribal problem inside, inside Saudi Arabia. They don't know what is happening. It's one family controlling other tribes. So sooner or later, when time comes, you see, always having uh, things have to have, a, let us say, a suitable reasoning for things to conquer. So those countries are made by the British intelligence when they wanted to destroy uh, the, the Ottoman Empire. They are the one who created them. And the one who created them can destroy them too. So never invest in those countries. If now you never know, maybe 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 next week a war will, I will erupt in between Iran and the and the Muslim Sunni. And Iran will take over Emirat in 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 a few hours, not even in, maybe one hour. They are so close to Emirat. Maybe many of you do not know how close Emirat is to Iran. It's so close. And even American cannot protect them. Why? Because simply they are so close. The only reason for American to, to protect them, if the American will take over the country forever, like what, what happened to Kuwait. Now Kuwait, now they have a prince. Supposedly he is the ruler of the country, but the fact that the, the real ruler is the American. Let me show you. I will open Google Peace be upon him. Do you see how how close it is? Look. This is Imarat. And this is Iran. Do you have an idea? extremely close Bahrain more than 70 to 80 percent of it is Iranian Shia Qatar is no different they can take it so easy so those countries are in extreme dangerous place for investment or to have a this is can be temporary like if you want to have a business there it have to be a, like a business you can fly in a, over one day like it's something it's a, based on the internet let's say but buying property etc this is extremely stupid decision because you never know when the disaster will hit do we have any Mohammedan and you know now the, the Muslim Sunni, their biggest concern is Iran because uh, the Shia is spreading between Muslim Sunni like fire. And this is the concern of Saudi Arabia. Iran became so powerful. So let us make it simple. The Arab, they fear again the history of the Persian. The Persian is coming back. But this time they are more occupied by Islam, which means they can invade and claim to be Muslims. So the Muslim Sunni, they cannot say those are kuffar. Yet they are saying kuffar already. They are accusing the Shia to be kuffar. But look what the Shia, they are preparing for them. They have an army in Lebanon, Hezbollah, here. They have all of Iran, actually. All of Iraq, sorry. All this area, you believe it or not, is Hezbollah. All of Iraq. All of this, all the way inside the borders of Syria. This is the Shia. More than 90% of Iraq is Shia. And most of them, they, are, they worship Iran. In Syria itself, a huge part of it is controlled by the Shia. Literally by Hezbollah. Hezbollah of Iran. Then you go to Yemen. Yemen, the capital and most, maybe 85% of the country already, is controlled by the Shia. So if you look at the map, the Shia is surrounding the Muslim Sunni from every direction. This is the Shia Iran. Connected to Iraq, connected to Syria, 
connected to Lebanon and here there is the Shia of Yemen and not to forget to mention that Oman is very close to the Shia too they don't take a side but eh, mostly they will side with Iran so those little tiny countries even Saudi Arabia it's a, it's a big by size but it's a small by population they are no match to fight the Persian no match the Persian will eat them alive and if the Muslim they think that Turkey can help them the Turkish they are for sale whoever pay more they go for it Erdogan yesterday he was the enemy of Emirat today he is meeting with the Emirati president because he is desperate for money the Turkish lira is under the ground and the country is collapsing anyway do we have any Muslim want to say anything anyone Uh, Mr. Ricky, I don't want Christians to call to discuss the Bible here because that will give the Muslims an opportunity to take a break from me exposing their garbage profit. There's many other channels that discuss the Bible. You can go and join them. Right? I mean, I'm not the only one here, can, And even maybe they can do way better than me. But when it's come to Islam, none of them can do better than me. All right. Otherwise, there's many channels they can really help you about the Bible. You know, when uh, when Imara they signed a peace a peace agreement with Israel, do you know why they signed the agreement? I mean, since when those Arabs they are so in love with the Jews? But because they are they are so desperate for security they need the help of Israel Iran will eat them alive Saudi buying from them weapon I mean all of them they are under uh, all of them they are under now the protection of Israel all of them they depend that if Iran attack them Israel will protect them uh, How to call this CP? How to call this CP? Huh? Hmm. Well, those countries are not countries. Anyone can can beat them easy. I mean, the Saudi army. Look, the Saudi army is fighting the Shia in 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 Yemen for the last four years. All the army of Saudi Arabia and the army of Emirat, and even they brought fighting fighters from Sudan. They brought fighters from many Islamic countries, paid them a lot of money, and still they are not able to defeat the Shia, not even one meter back. And now the Shia, they are almost taking the city of Ma'rib. Ma'rib, sorry. So this is their territory. This is Sana'a. This is the Yemen. And it is under the control of the Shia, the capital under the control of Shia. Four years of war, army of Saudi Arabia, all the weapons they received from USA, still they cannot defeat the Shia in Yemen. For a very simple reason. Those Shia, you kill one of them, the women, they make them babies in the same day. <laughs> Please do a study of uh, 4171, how Jesus is three in one. Well, we mentioned that many times already. You know, for us, we don't believe in what the Quran say, but we use the Quran to show the Muslims that they are hypocrite. Because if Jesus can be three and one in the same time in the Quran, can God be? I mean, he's God. You know? You see, Muslims, when the idea of God is very corrupt idea. When they want, God can do any want, whatever he want. The second you say Christianity, they say, no, he cannot. Can God be, uh, okay, if, if the God of the Muslim says he is seven gods, any Muslim there to question? No.
you know, uh, somebody's talking about God fighting with the human. You see, when if a Muslim he like did that, he was making fun of that, you know, because he is donkey. What happened, you know, what happened always, uh, Muslim they take advantage of those who do not know Islam. And that's why I'm here to train you. I'm not going to live for long. I mean, uh, or all of us will die, right? But my duty here is to teach you how to get them busted. So one day that was making fun about Israel or Jacob was uh, uh, wrestling with God, right? Uh, you do not need to debate him about it. Say to him, you're stupid. So why your Quran, if you don't like the story, if you don't accept the story, why your stupid Quran call Jacob Israel? Because this is what Israel mean. So the second, the Quran accept the name, that's mean the Quran accept the story. But those donkeys they do not know their religion. However, those donkeys they flourish only if they are arguing with other donkey, which means they're ignorant, who do not know. He he's not qualified to debate. You know what I mean? And Muslims they choose carefully the one they will debate. That's why they stay away from me. You mention other name, they line up to debate the person. Like say apostate prophet, right away they want to debate apostate prophet. Say Christian prince, we debate him only face to face. Right? The second they see that their opponent is not a person who can make victory, even if it's going to be, let us say, uh, he will not make victory and they will not make victory, they will do it. But if they knew that the one they will argue with is going to wet the floor with them, they put all the conditions in the world to make it not to happen. Otherwise, ask yourself why Why all of them, they are lucky. I mean, they got Muslim to debate them. Nobody want to get close to me. How I can defeat my Muslim friend with debate? Learn education. Education is the is the way to defeat ignorance. We don't want you to defeat your Muslim friend. We want to de defeat his ignorance. So, you know, we are you know for we are not against the Muslims. We are against the ignorance. Enemy or enemy is ignorance. Muslims are poor people. They've been fooled. If they see the truth, they will leave it. All right, do we have any Abdul? <clears throat> yeah, the ambush, uh, the ambush, uh, uh, apostate prophet. Uh, when the last time you will ambush me? The coward, he says he will debate Christian Prince. I called him, he hang up on me. He did not let me ask any question. He did not even let me answer. You have 30 seconds. Okay, uh, hang up on him. Hey, Abdullah, I'm not going to read your comment. You're just, a, just an idiot. Do we have any Muslim want to say something to us? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? Who is a Muslim like to call me? What do you think about Zakaria Botres? He's a wonderful man. I respect him a lot. This is how all priests they should be. This is how all priests should be. Anyone, you see, this is how you know who is a true priest and who is not. The one who is hypocrite, the one who doesn't say things as it is, he is no Christian, as simple as that. Um... So, any Abdul? Let us look at Skype to see. I didn't see any text, anything. Man, Skype today is dead. Oh boy, what happened? Not even nothing. 
Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. Da -da 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 okay, well, what we can do? It is what it is. Give them the trinity of contradictions. I'm not sure what does that mean. Any Muslim? How many times today I said any Muslim? And yet not even one. Thank you, Arian. I'm trying to read the, the chat. I mean, too many of you, it's hard to follow up. And as you know, I am an Arab, and we are very, very slow. There's a guy who took a picture of a hole in the front of his house when he was six years old. Then he took a picture when he is 35 years old. The same hole is still there. Why? Because each time they call the city, they say to him, Inshallah, we will fix it tomorrow. And the hole is still there. And the guy, maybe in 20 years from now, he will take another picture. Here is 65. And he will take a picture next to the hole. And the hole is still there. Because each time he called, he said to him, we will fix it, inshallah. Everything there is inshallah. And Allah never show up. Mm -hmm. Just wait for Allah to fix it. Do we have any Abdul? Uh, let me guess. We will call you Christian Prince, Insha'Allah. Hmm. That is something. You will be happy with Jesus and Muhammad in Jannah? Okay, well, I don't know. If I am you, I will not be very happy too much to be with Muhammad because he might sleep with you. This guy is weird. Didn't you hear that he said that in the heaven there is images of boys and men and women? And if you like an image, you will be you will, you will go inside the image. What if Allah made you one of those images? Just think about it. By the way, if you go to heaven, don't forget to take a picture of your penis, as your prophet said is going to be endless. Do you think your phone will be capable to take a picture of English penis, brother? I mean, how do not know how you can't capture that penis? But maybe, I mean, you never know until that time, they might find a way. Like time travel camera go with English penis. So Abdullah will be in heaven and you know and then we will see we christian we will be in hell supposedly and then we will see the penis of abdullah like zzz, going and we look like says abdullah penis your name will be written on it by the way hey abdullah uh, uh, if you don't mind please when you go to heaven so just we can recognize your penis from other penises don't forget like put a number and you know, give us a sign you know just you know anything because how will we remember, how will we know which one is you? Right? Obviously, Islam is from God. What is your thought about Sister Maggie Kuzam? I don't know who is this Maggie Kuzam. Do you believe that Katham companions really believed that he was a true prophet? <clears throat> You know, they are gang and they get the benefit of uh, a company, this man, the business to grow. And this, uh, you know, the believer, they are business, doing business, you know. I don't believe they are believers. Uh, 
let us see how we can read those comments brother can you someday take a Christian callers my friend I'm not here seeking fan with my respect to you uh, you know for me I have a family here I love you all but uh, I'm not really interested in the word fans you know I want you to be only a fan for the truth always side with the truth not with a person <clears throat> do you believe I answered you Zachariah already I don't know maybe you don't hear me are you going to broadcast in quality and quality of life and Christmas maybe we can make a day for the broadcast in there for Christmas time why not or maybe here why not yeah what do you want me to do for Christmas coming to you as Santa Claus you know uh, uh, I don't know if you saw those videos in uh, in YouTube the Muslims each time in Christmas they warn Muslims not to celebrate Christmas and in their TV they teach their the children they say what about giving you a gift from Baba Muhammad Baba Muhammad hold on imagine your daughter she is six years old and she sit in the lap of Papa Muhammad uh-huh Papa Muhammad here we go they found the solution for Papa Noel Papa Muhammad are you going to let your child to sit in the lap of Papa Muhammad mm. That's a good thing. Have fun. I think it's going to work. Papa Muhammad. Yeah. <laughs> and what Papa Muhammad will give the children's suicide belt? What exactly he will have there? A dagger? A stabber? Acid? to throw it at face of women as they do in Europe hmm. Papa Muhammad yeah but you know the good thing is that all almost all Islamic countries especially in the Middle East Arab countries all of them they celebrate Christmas you know they try to oppose it but I mean Christmas go this is why I encourage really people uh, that Christmas is something really powerful and it worked gratefully to bring Christ to the life of Mohammedans uh, you know Christ our Lord is a lot of joy if you watch the, the intro here we have when a Muslim he asked about if music is haram and art is haram so what is halal I mean how we can have fun Zaka Naik, he said, let us go in the video here, here. Yeah, this part. Watch and love. Without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? See, listening to music is haram. Haram is forbidden. It's it's big sin. And uh, uh, watching movie is forbidden. Chess is forbidden. Art drawing is forbidden. So what we do in this life and what is life for? What is exactly what we can do? You know. The answer. Listen again. Let me tell you, brother, at the outset that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. That's it. So, okay, well, so what is the fun? There's nothing left. You can't play chess. You can't draw. You can't sing. You can't play music. You cannot... Uh, football is haram, by the way. Uh, basketball is haram. I mean, everything is haram. So what we will do? That's why you see that the Muslims they don't follow. I mean, all of them they are hypocrite. 
All of them, they are hypocrite. They claim that they are Muslims. You ask them, you say, I'm a Muslim. But none of them follow the stupidity of Muhammad. There is a news about a man burned alive in group people in Pakistan. Yeah, we spoke, you know, we spoke about it already. I advise people never go to Islamic countries for any reason, tourism, work, anything. This is, this is those lands are controlled by the devil. You go there, you are responsible for a stupid decision you made. Don't cry for it. Why an engineer from Sri Lanka will go to a stupid country like Pakistan? I prefer to stay in Sri Lanka and take $200 salary with my family and kids having a good time, even if it's not too much money from living in such a filthy country. Why you want to do that? Never ever. You see, I'm born from the Middle East. I am born literally. Which means the blood I have is from there. I will never go there. Why people don't use their brain? The most corrupt, the most evil, the most cheaters, the most liars, the most people who speak about God, but they do always the opposite, is there. Why you want to go there? Daniel, he is saying, Christian prince is a hypocrite and bigot. Ah, okay. Well, Daniel, let us talk about hypocrite. Your prophet, he says, don't touch women when they have their period. But your prophet was having sex with them when they have their period. <laughs> Who is the hypocrite? Are you there, Daniel? And about bigot, let us see the bigot. The bully prophet, he was bullying even his uncle. He promised to kill all the Christians and the Jews, and he called them animals, pigs, filthy, nudges, you name it. Now you there, Daniel? Why you don't call me Daniel so we can love? You're upset? In Google, it says that Pakistan is number one country search for sex with donkeys. Daniel, I want you to be honest with me. Are you counted in that number? Or you were searching for something else? Daniel, is it true that number one country search for sex with donkey is Pakistan? Or I'm making things up. You can search it right now in Google. And by the way, I mean you are beating everybody else. Nobody can. Number one. I mean, you must be proud. With donkey. I mean, what about goat? What happened to the goat? You, you, you people lost your interest? What's wrong with goats? They have nice hair. I mean, donkey. I mean, what is exactly is tempting you? Hmm. There's debate going lately between Brother Wahid and Sister Maggie Hosea. Why they are debating? Aren't they both are those Christians? Secondly, who is this Maggie? Is she a scholar or she is a YouTuber? People are funny. Maggie Khuzam. Don't give the bread to someone do not never been in the kitchen, he will burn it. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us?
I'm asking about your claim the prophet is sleeping with women and her men says oh this is very easy he's asking his prophet to prove his claim okay I will put your request here this is your request mr. Daniel I'm asking about the donkey he's talking about Muhammad I'm asking about your claim of the prophet sleeping with women in her menses. Do you like to call me, Daniel, to show it, to make you read it, or you want me to read it for you? First of all, this is the Quran. It says, chapter 2, verse 222. Look how many two, my friend. You are a two, two. It says, concerning women and their courses, stay away from them. It's a hurt. Okay, keep away from your women when they have a, a menstruation. Uh, don't approach them. Don't approach them. Let us go to the hadith. And now you will see that your prophet is was a donkey. Hmm. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Your prophet, he used to fund the Aisha. He ordered her to put an izar between her legs so the blood will not be all over him. When she have her menstruation, it says, you Shiruni, he F her. Are you there? Daniel? Are you? Now who is the donkey? Now he will play dead. Now he will say, I heard nothing, I saw nothing, I'm not even here. See the Quran says, stay away from women, they have their period. Muhammad, he have 13 wives, yet the horny, he is doing it with the women, she have a blood, and she is bleeding. Are you there, Daniel? Never change Christian Prince, because you will lose. You can move a little bit, Daniel. Come on, just say hello, just to be sure you're okay. Okay, Daniel, I think he, his battery is, is, is dead now, so it's okay. He will charge later. I mean, he will, he will go home, he will charge it, and then he will, he will give us, uh, yep. Do we have any Abdul? No, Abdullah is not dead. Abdullah said you're online. I mean, Abdullah is the genius, by the way. It's in the front of him, the screen. He says, I'm lying. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and this is Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, which means both of them, they are authentic. Look, it says Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari 300, Muslim 293. A line, a line, the denial, the denial of the Abdul is a good sign. Yeah, we show it to them in the screen, and you are lying. Okay, whatever you say, whatever you say. You remind me of your prophet when the guy he keep asking him to give his brother honey and the brother is getting sick more and more so the prophet said to him the prophet look at the word prophet when the guy he came more than once twice three times and his 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 brother is dying 
So the prophet says to him, your brother's stomach is lying and Allah told the truth. What a doctor, man. Your stomach brother is lying? Hmm. Any Abdul? Okay, guys, let us be easier in the text and be nice. Don't use a very harsh language, you know. Just focus on the topic, not in the person. All right. No, actually, translation here says Fundalin is not correct because it says Yubashir, Yubashir. So he, he do if her. Yubashir. Yubashir or Rajul Zawjatahu, he sleep with her. CP, let us hear some stories of how you become a Christian. How I become a Christian? Yeah. How I become a Christian? That's a good question. Yeah, you know, I don't really like to talk about myself. Uh, I never claim that I am like, uh, uh, I don't know, I mean, there's nothing to be proud about uh, as me, you know. Uh, maybe most of you are better Christian than me. I don't know. And I find that a person when he speak good about himself is not doing good. You know what I mean? So I I avoid speaking about myself um, because I don't find the reason for that. In the same time, the only good is God. You know. So why I want to talk about? me when I am not the good God I'm not right there's some people they like to talk about themselves um, they like you know they, they like to be the topic actually for me I don't like it say really because who care I mean if I'm good or bad who care at the end of the day it's the Lord who see what we hide right the Lord he knew what you do and what you don't want to do. What people think about you is not really important. How many people they are in jail and they never commit a crime? Why? Because according to the court, they commit a crime. And like you hear from time to time, a guy, he just left jail after 38 years and they find out that he is not the one who killed that person. So uh, uh, there's no justice will come from a human being. And when I say no justice will come from a human being, which means nobody can be justice with you, regardless what you do. Nobody can appreciate what you do, except the Lord, because the only one who really know your heart is the Lord. So I advise people not to speak too much about themselves. Like people, they say to me, tell us your testimony. I love, you know, I don't like those things, really, testimony. Me, myself, I don't like it. Uh, for whatever I say to you is meaningless to you unless you live it. It's like somebody says to you, uh, let us say a person who lost an arm and he explained to you how hard it is to live without an arm. But doesn't matter how much she explain to you, you do not know really what she's talking about because you have two arms. You will understand only when you have one. So nobody will understand except the person who lived the experience. Uh, you were a Muslim and became a Christian? No, I never been a Muslim. I'm too smart to be a Muslim for a second. I believe it's an insult to be a Muslim for a second because how in the world I want to believe there's a God will make my penis endless. That alone will make me leave this religion, even if it's true. 
I mean, is that a really a reward or a, or a punishment? Imagine your penis go in the jungle of Amazon. Do you know what kind of ants they have there? I mean, seriously, do you know the ants of the Amazon? What if your penis went to the Amazon jungle and it become under the attack of the ants there? Or you go in the river of Amazon and you have those fish, oh boy, and they will rip it apart. Oh no. Did you watch that movie? Oh man. You know, you see those little creatures, they may be little, but they are extremely dangerous. So imagine you have an endless penis. May Allah bless your penis, by the way, if you are a Muslim. And then, by mistake, I mean, an accident happened. Your penis hit one of their colony. Oh boy. Are you ready? Are you? Hmm. How stupid do you think is Quran 12:36 regard to what Muhammad could remember when he heard original story of a Christian? Uh, see, when, I want you not to do the same as the Muslims. The Muslim they take one verse and they say, "Okay, this is uh, you know this is stupid." If you want to enjoy more stupidity of the Quran, you better read the whole story. You know what I mean? I try always uh, to read the whole story because the story will be really more more funny. Don't focus only in one verse. And I find very... Uh, uh, like there's a book, it's called Asbab al-Nuzul. Some chapters in the Quran they don't have explanation of them in that book because supposedly the book is um, about the reason for the verses to come. And uh, but if if the explanation is exist, then you will see what is behind the story and how really it's foolish and funny. But anyway, if you read that verse, you will understand nothing. It doesn't make any sense. Nothing there makes sense. And the Quran, as usual, mistakes after mistake after mistake. Do we have any Abdul have anything to say? Today it's very dry. Anyone? I will buy and read your translation for the Quran. Okay. Now I have a reason to translate. Before I don't. Thank you for giving me a reason to translate. There is no mistake in the Quran. Ah, uh, it's deliberately deceptive. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. So, uh, why today is very slow? Where is the Muslims? What happened? There's like any, there's any special movie in TV? Well, if you read the whole chapter, then you will see, my friend Stefan, that the whole story there is full of errors. Muhammad is a person, he does not know really what he's talking about. And uh, uh, I think you said to me, you, you said to me chapter 12, right? Didn't you say chapter 12? 
as I remember from your text, 1230 something, 36. Hmm. <clears throat> Always Muhammad is a person he copy uh, from other books and he add his own sp spices. And when he do that, you know, this is where the problem start. I was yawning, by the way, and Allah, he hate those who yawn. Why you don't play commercial break? Uh, no. Actually, uh, uh, you mad, he made the commercial break with the black seed. You can see it in his video, in his channel. It's very funny. Hey, fake uh, prince, answer my question. Hey, Daniel, I answer your question. Your prophet, he was having sex with his wife when she had her menstruation. Where you been, man? Did you know that we can't do anything with you, our wives during her menses? Except having, except, of course, we can do what? We can do anything with our wives during her menses except having intercourse. Okay. Let us see. Daniel, so you went to Google and you spent 10 hours and you came back and you come with this answer. Well, let everybody laugh at you. Here we go. It says, keep away from women. It doesn't say don't do have intercourse. Stay away totally from them and don't approach them until they are clean. So Daniel, again, you are a donkey. Guys, does it say stay away and don't approach them? Don't get close to them. Stay away. Keep away. So you are a certified idiot again. So this is your text. And now he will go for 10 hours. He will come back to find to, to try to find to re, to retain his honor, which is shattered everywhere. Christian Prince, don't you know that we can't do anything with our wives? No. The Quran says, stay away from your wives. The Quran never says, don't do intercourse. It says, stay away from your wife and don't even keep close. So again, you are a certified idiot. The verse in front of you. Don't try, Daniel. Don't you know that I'm a Christian prince? I mean, if I'm you, I will not even try. You are just embarrassing yourself. Each time you come back, you know, you, you sound like a rabbit. He, you know, like uh, uh, I spank him, then he go down in the hole, and then he like put his head down, like, okay, and you go and like find some carrot and come back and throw the carrot at me. Why Google say you have a living? Well, the Muslim, they say that he have a living at the same time, which means there's women who pass away at the moment he have, at one moment he have a living, but the total, they are 13. However, those numbers, I believe they are all, they are wrong. I believe Muhammad, he have uh, way more of women, and not to mention the sex slaves, you know, the slaves he owned. Uh, well, you don't, don't blame him because the Muslim they try to justify what Muhammad do you know because how the Quran says stay away from them they'll have to come and say no we can the Prophet he did you know they take the Prophet against the Quran the Prophet is more prophet than the Quran Uh, yeah, for sure he do not know what Daniel mean. No, actually, not a single name in the Quran from those who they are coming from the Jewish or Aramaic. The Muslim they knew what they mean. If you ask a Muslim what Gabriel mean, they don't know. Israel mean, they don't know. Ishmael, Abraham, Isa, they don't know. They have no idea. 
Isaac. I don't know. We have no idea. All names. Because this is a theft. Where you can find my books? If you want my books in English, you can find them in Amazon. If you are a person who speaks other languages, we give them for free, like Indonesian, Russian, Chinese, etc. You know, the good thing about having my books, not only your knowledge will be increased, actually, if you are able, if you are a person who have a very good memory, and at the same time, let's say you have a skills of debate, those books can make you the most powerful debater ever uh, when it's come uh, to be about Islam. You know, when I made my first two books, I wanted them to be an enough weapon to wipe the floor with Muhammad. So I put like what is enough to fill a library of books into books. Yeah, you can, all of you, you are welcome to download my videos, any of them. Any of any. I have thousands of videos. They are made for you, my friend. They are not for me. Those are not for me. Those are for you. All my videos is just to serve you. I'm here to teach you. And I, uh, I hope not only you will take my videos, you will learn from them, and then you teach your people, right? You see, uh, I have people who have my videos, like the same video now I'm doing, in other channel, he will have like 80,000 in maybe two days. I will have, for some reason, 30. I don't get upset. That's wonderful. So for me, I don't really... Uh, you might even have my videos and you have more subscribers from me. That's, that's wonderful. I, I'm not here to be about me. I don't care, really. I mean, for me, I am just serving. And as long as we can spread the truth, this is why I keep asking people, please download my videos and put them in your channel. Actually, the funny is that people who download my videos, YouTube allow them to monetize and even receive donation. I cannot. Imagine, it's my video. I cannot monetize it here. They can. <laughs> yeah, because they fight me bad. You know, they hate me. So they, they target my, my channel. And they don't want me to have any, let us say, any benefit. They, they thought if they stop me from being able to have monetization or, or donation, that this guy will stop coming to YouTube. And actually, it worked. There's many, uh, you know, the second you take away from them this uh, uh, ability to take a donation and YouTube, etc., they stop coming, they stop making videos because they were motivated by money, you know. But this is not the case for me. I don't care, you know. Uh, I always I was doing it for free and nothing will change yeah. the Lord is our provider <clears throat> but this is what they thought they thought if we stop him from being able to receive a donation the guy will not go online every day and actually what's happened is the opposite I'm here many hours every day almost I mean the last 24 hours I think we stayed online if I say 13, 14 hours, I'm not exaggerating. In just within, I mean, within two days, but one, 24 hours. Um, well, to translate my book, you do not need a tutorial. I mean, just uh, translate, you know, bring the book and do it in your language. It's very easy. Just do the same. Same chapters, same names, same titles, you know. You can do that with the Turkish language. Uh, 
Does Muhammad has six slaves or when he was Khadija arrived? No, I believe the coward Muhammad when Khadija was alive, he did not dare to do any to play with his penis around because she is the rich woman and she is in control. You know, he was her puppy. But uh, the second Khadija, she is gone. Muhammad now is free and he got the money. Uh, the prophet he said uh, that uh, said Constantine Istanbul will be conquered how that is not a prophecy thank you for saying that I will show you that this is not a prophecy it was the opposite because the one who will conquer it it was the Arab not the Turkish your prophet was speaking to the Arab in front of him and your prophet he said stay away from the Turkish as long they stay away from you Muhammad he never thought that the Turkish will become Muslims actually your prophet he believed that the Turkish are people of Gog and Magog Let us see. So it was a big failure for Muhammad. He said, You will conquer Constantinia. He was just making encouragement. The same what happened in the fall. He said to them, 100 can fight 1000. They went to war, they lost. Uh, And Muhammad, he claimed that the Muslims, they will fight the Turks in the Judgment Day. So again, your prophet, he failed. Here we go. So when Muhammad he made the claim that you are going to conquer Constantinia, he was speaking to the Arab in front of him, and not a single Turkish was between them. Are you there? And not only that, actually, your prophet he made fun of the Turkish, and he is uh, he made uh, fun of their look, and he claimed that the Turkish are from Gog and Magog. And let me find the hadith. Uh, You know, obviously, Mohammedans are people who do not know their cult. They are midget. They are midget. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, value number 11, page number 85. And your prophet saying that the people of Gog and Magog are the Turkish, and he described them as Asian people with funny faces. Excuse my language. Uh, here we go. It says here that Zulkarnain he saw uh, the people of Gog and Magog, and each one of them he was half man. The the the, the height of each one of them, sorry, is the height of height man, uh, half man, and he is uh, fat, and they have uh, not nails like you know what they call the nails for the animals. I don't know what the word in are in English and they have teeth like lions and they have mouth uh, 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 like uh, uh, you know what let me use Google translation man <laughs> that will be easier <laughs> sorry <laughs> but this is how stupid at your prophet and how stupid at your religion the Turkish people they are people of Gog and Magog so look at the description here yeah, this is better. Here we go. This is Al Khurtubi, value number 11, page number 85. Not me, and don't tell me I'm lying. So, as Al Qurnain, he saw them, and then here we say, Look, he said the Turk is a group of Gog and Magog. Do you see it? <laughs> Don't try Christian friends. 
I will smash you, literally. The Turkish are Gog and Magog. Hmm. Yeah. And remember, the Turkish will be the enemy as long as they are the Gog and Magog. They are the one who will attack even Mecca. They are the one who will conquer more of Islamic land, and they are the enemy of Allah. So how you said that the Prophet, he prophesied that you are going to conquer Constantinia. Obviously, he wasn't speaking about you. He was speaking about the Arab. Because according to him, the Turkish are the Gog and Magog. Are you still there? And let me see if I can give you the link. This one, the link have the title have Arabic. So I need to shorten it. Okay. Who won the link, guys? Do you see how easy to conquer their stupidity? Knowledge, my friend. Knowledge, not ignorance. When the knowledge comes, the stupidity, stupidity is defeated. Let me pause for you. Now, this website is owned by the Shia, but this is Al Qurtabi, which is a Sunni book. So the Sunni cannot say, oh, this is a Shia website. It just we search for the book and it is in the Shia library. So this is not really important where it is. But as you see, we have the value number. We have the, you know, the page number and you can go and use the same. Use Google translation and you will find exactly what we are saying. Erdogan is Gog and Magog, my friend. Your, your Erdogan is Gog and Magog. All right. Who's next? Who's next? You know, they, they try to... Uh, uh, let us say, oh, you can post the link with Arabic in it. Uh, I, I thought because before I tried, it doesn't work. YouTube did not accept. Look like it's work now. All right. That's good. Yeah, I know, Abdullah, your prophet was the greatest on earth. And even when he spoke in the street, the rocks, they said to him, Assalamu Alaikum, which is a clear sign of stupidity and, and mental illness. This is a clear sign of stupidity. When a man, he walk in the street and he hear rocks saying to him, Assalamu Alaikum, Prophet. And remember, nobody hear it except him. Let me find you the hadith. Uh, and actually, there's a specific uh, 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 rock, not all rocks, that speak to Muhammad. Only one, just one rock. Because I think this is the only rock speak Arabic. Do you see it, Abdul? Obviously, your prophet is mentally ill. Don't use bad language, otherwise the, the admin will block your, will remove your, uh, your text, please. Abshir saying, I am a Muslim. Some would call it moderate. I know what is moderate. That's not a thing. Either you are a Muslim, believe in everything, or you don't. What is moderate? Like, did you install new chips? Did you update your Quran? Do you have a new Quran? Yeah. 
So as you see here, I recognize a stone in Mecca, which used to pay me solution. Isn't it a clear sign of stupidity? Only one rock in Mecca used to say, Assalamu Alaikum Prophet, and the Prophet say back, Assalamu Alaikum. doesn't matter you're born in Europe or not Islam have nothing to do where you are born Islam is Islam either take it or leave it Islam is to follow what Muhammad taught and if you say I'm moderate it's mean you don't want to be a Muslim actually you're just trying to fool yourself saying I am I'm still a Muslim but I don't want to follow everything you know but reality you are not hmm? Do you believe the original Kaaba located in Petra? Well, you know, that will not make any difference for me, really. I mean, who care? It's in Petra or it is in the moon, who care? You see, uh, focus in the head of the snake, not in theories. If I am a historian, maybe that will make a difference for me. Uh, I have to be somebody who study, like I say, a certain kind of science, right? To check it out and see if it's true or not. But for me, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to, to prove their, their stupidity and their stupid profit. And it's better for me not to go to theories because theories will not change a faith of a person because maybe you can prove it, right? Uh, but if you prove that the Kaaba is a pagan thing, so it, the Kaaba is the Kaaba. It's a pagan thing. Prove it. When, when somebody says the black stone erase your sin, this is pagan, you know, pagan teaching. So focus in what help to save the Muslims from the cult. However, if there is a scientist and he is making his own study, we encourage that, right? We aren't against it. But for me, my part is different from his part. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I believe everybody in this life have his own duty, right? So a person, he study certain things, he focus on that. My focus is different. My videos are too long, you can cut it pieces. Like now, I just made a video, I made a, uh, made a, 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 a few moments talking about Muhammad saluting the stones. Cut it, make it a video by itself. You don't have to translate the whole video. Right? Uh, not only Arab are racist, Muhammad is racist. Muhammad, he says, the most person Allah he hates is a black man. So you are a black man. Muhammad, he says, that Allah created white people from the right shoulder of Adam, and he said to them, go to heaven, I don't care. And he said, I created the black people from the left shoulder of Adam, and I said to them, go to hell, and I don't care. And this is in the book of Tirmidhi. This is Muhammad himself. Even the Muslim, they say that Muhammad said that the black stone was white like milk and the sin of mankind made it black. So what sin make you? Black. So according to them, sin is the reason for you to be black. And not to forget to mention, the Quran is full of those things. The day Allah will make faces white and faces blackened. Who is the one who will be black? Those who don't believe in Allah. So being black is a punishment according to the Quran. You see it? All of this is racism. And the Muslim, they start adding things between bracket just to make it look nicer. But the Arabic it says the day Allah will make faces black and faces white. Okay. Hey, Abdullah, don't post those things. This is the last warning. If you post those stupid things, I will block you. Either you give me something smart or I will, I will send you free shipping and head into Allah. All right, Abdullah. 
If you open the chapter 27, uh, verse number 82, where Allah will send a beast, it's called uh, uh, Jassasa. You know, Jassasa appeared many places in the stupid religion. And this beast is going to uh, have the ring of Solomon and the, uh, the staff of Moses. And it's going to make the whole world white and black. So all those who they are white, those are the Muslims. And all those who don't believe in Allah, Allah will punish them and make them black. This is that's what Islam says. If you don't believe me, you can open the interpretation for the verse. Go to Ibn Kathir's example. The women which uh, 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 the companion of Muhammad he killed, which is supposedly uh, one of the daughters of Allah, she was what? She was black, correct? Remember? Search for the ex expedition of Khadim al-Walid. The expedition of Khadim al-Walid. He killed the daughter of Allah. She was a dark-skinned woman. The one who will destroy the Kaaba is the shaitan. He is what? He's black. And you know, just to show you the stupidity of the social media, so once I was arguing with Muslims in Facebook, so I said to him, uh, how you know that he is, uh, he is, say, uh, he, sorry, uh, he is in, uh, uh, he is Satan. So he said, the uh, Muslim said, have you ever heard of an angel? He is black. Imagine or not, I answered him saying, so are you saying that whoever is black is evil? Uh, you, uh, Facebook, they deleted my comment and they sent me a warning and the Muslim comment is still there. And he is the one saying, have you ever seen an angel or uh, not only an angel, he said an angel or a good person uh, uh, or uh, someone sent by God, he is not, uh, he's, he's black. And Facebook, they ban me, not the Muslims. And this is why we see the Muslims always, they, they ask the atheists to help them. Atheists are the biggest help for the cut of Islam, liberals. They protect Islam, they defend Islam, they lie about Islam. They are, they are in bed with Islam. But you know, we know that there's no different. Yes, there is bad people between everywhere. Uh, maybe in some other, like because of uh, people, they have no education from some certain ethic, ethnic group, but not because they are white or black, but because they have a problem in the society, drugs, uh, uh, no education, no jobs, etc. So crimes will be high. But there is wonderful people that are black and there is bad people. There's good people everywhere. There's wonderful people that are white and there's bad people. Same for Asian, everywhere. Um, you go any country in the world, there's rapists. There's people who arrest the rapists from the same ethnic, correct? There's people who they are thieves and there's people who arrest the thieves from the same ethnic. So uh, it's not an ethnic thing. It is about individuals. And if you live in a poor country, usually uh, always Poor society bring a lot of problems. Poor, you know. Unless you live in a village, small village, where people, they can just grow some chickens and life will be easier. But living in an extreme poor situation will lead you into crimes. Ah, Harun, guys. Harun, the word black does not mean black. It's a metaphor. But this is about making their faces black, literally, Harun. Let me show you, Abdul, potato. Guys, look what Harun is. Harun is trying to fix it, you know. Muslims, they are smart, genius. This is a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Okay, let's see if it's a metaphor or not. So we go to Ibn Kathir, in front of your eyes, Mr. Metaphor. How is Metaphor doing, by the way? Don't forget to say hello to him. Okay, this is Mr. Metaphor. And this is a chapter 27. 
Are you ready for the metaphor? I will give you a lot of metaphor. How many kilos you want? Okay, whatever you want. We are here to provide you with the metaphor. Okay, okay. Mr. Metaphor, here we go. This is Ibn Kathir, chapter 27, verse number 82. You say this is a metaphor. Okay. Let us see the metaphor. Are you ready? I hope so. Okay. Read with me, brother. Okay. This is the beast who will come from the ground, brother. He, his head is the like a head of a bull, his eyes like the ears of a pig, his ears like the ears of an elephant, his horn like the horn of a stag, his neck is neck like a uh, uh, like a neck of an ostrich, his chest like a chest of a lion, his color like the color of a tiger. I mean, stupid. Okay, and then, and then, uh, he will come back. He will. It will bring with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. Alhamdulillah, black magic. You know, magic the Solomon. And it will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face. Are you there, Mr. Metaphor? Harun, how is the metaphor going with you? Are you there? I hope that the metaphor is really doing good now. I mean, come on, it's a metaphor. So it will make a white sp spot in his face is going to hit him with the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon, depending on the situation. And then it says here, which will spread until it's his face shining white as a result. Hey, Mr. Metaphor, are you there? Harun? Harun, ya Harun. Do you know what Harun means, by the way? You are a big cat, that's all. You are just a cat. I'm sure you do not know even what Harun mean. Cat, meow. So, spread until his face we came shine. Those are the Muslims, okay? And then it says here, and then there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face. And it will be spread until his face turned to be black as a result. Are you there, Mr. Metaphor? I like metaphor. Mm. Metaphor is the best, forget about the rest. Don't text me in Skype unless you are a Muslim and debate me, otherwise I will block you. Don't be any, don't be silly. Are you there, Harun, the cat? Should I continue? Because it's getting more funny, by the way. Hmm. It's a metaphor, brother. It's a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here it says, the beast will emerge from the earth with the staff of Moses and uh, the ring of Solomon and then it will strike the nose of the disbelievers. It's a metaphor. The, the nose here, by the way, present penis. I think, I think so. It's a metaphor for penis. And then after it hit the nose of the disbeliever with the staff of Moses, it will make it disbeliever, uh, you know, a face into a black brother. Hmm. I mean, you Muslims are silly. Silly as what silly mean? Right? I would be a great rapper. Yeah, but uh, to be a great uh, person doing rap, uh, what they call it, rapper, you have to speak very good English, right? So I have a very short, let us say I have little, mm, you know, what the word I don't know say like in English in order to make I can make poetry in Arabic real poetry not rap rap is so easy yeah but this is very stupid religion Mr. Metaphor
Are there Harun? Harun. Ha 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 chu run. Did I did hachu? Ah, Harun. Allah, He loved those who sneeze. Alhamdulillah. I mean, look at this genius God. This God, He loved those who sneeze. Is that metaphor, by the way? Harun? When Allah, He loved those who sneeze. Is that metaphor or it's really sneezing? I heard that sneezing here is a metaphor to uh, Sleepy Joe. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. I heard rumors. What do you think? And I heard that if you do yawning, shaitan jump inside your mouth and he laugh from inside your mouth. I heard that this is metaphor for Pepsi Cola. I'm not sure, by the way, if he meant Pepsi Cola or not, but it might be, I mean, something inside your mouth, what is going to be? I better think about something not bad. Hmm. It's true, Shaitan, he, Allah, he loved those who sneeze. Thank you, Allah, for saying that. We sneeze a lot. Achoo, achoo, you know, you know, actually, you know, uh, flu. You can imagine that Allah, he loved winter. Because in winter, a lot of people, they sneeze. Allah is so happy. It's like a happy season, you know. Uh Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Well, I think it's enough for us today. And I will go do some uh, sneezing just to make Allah happy. I don't want to make Allah upset from me. I mean, that's, come on, we have to prevent Allah from doing harm to us. He's like a scary person, you know? So just do some sneezing, you know? And he was like, okay, I love those who sneeze. So Allah like is going to you now to punish me. I will do like hachu, 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 hachu. and Allah start like <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and do I hatch you? And he said, I love you. Like Allah, listen, listen. Hachu. Allah, I love you. So you sneeze. This God, he loved those who sneeze. You know? So we can say, like, okay, Allah for your sake, we are going to make some dance like a break we will sneeze for you we will make you barbecue and after we sneeze we do yawning say hello and then everybody go home and Allah is so excited he did not understand a word from what I said he did not understand what barbecue mean because Allah speak Arabic anyway so he will say I heard him saying sneeze and this is what I care for Unblock my account, Abby Frenzy. Why you are being frenzy? Huh. I mean, you are being frenzy and you want me to block and block you. Okay. Do you think Allah, he likes such a name? Frenzy? That's fishy name, to be honest with you. I mean, come on. You are being frenzy around. Stop being frenzy. Uh, yeah, me, my uh, sneeze. Yeah, I think my sneezing can help a lot, by the way. Yeah. Um, what happened to Harun and his friends? What happened to the Muslims? They are gone. Uh, that Jesus says about his death and resurrection. Yeah, Jesus, he says, Salamun alayya, yawma amutu, yawma walidtu, yawma amutu, yawma uba'atu hayya. Peace be upon me, the day I am born, the day I die, and the day I will be resurrected. So yes. Anyway, look like the Muhammadan are not here no more. And it's getting too late for me. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. And uh, you are hum humorous? Is that English word? Humor? Do you mean uh, hummus or humorous? Humorous, humorous. Uh, don't say that word to an Arab guy who don't speak good English. 
you are a humorous I was saying to myself man this guy is insulting me saying he's hummus I like hummus by the way I mean it's good I mean hummus is better than sneezing and Muhammad and garbage at least it's tasty you know hummus hummus and by the way there's no hummus in heaven of Allah is it weird do you know that in the heaven of Allah there's only uh, uh, meat of birds what a boring buffet you spend your life eating chicken what the heck hmm? that's the Quran chapter 3 verse number 18 says the angels are gods <clears throat> um, Let us go to 318 and give you a better understanding. See, because the Quran is stupid and the Arabic is very weird, so when you read it, it's going to say that Allah, Allah, He bear witness that there is no God but Allah and the angels and those who have knowledge. Uh, yeah, stupid book. You see, the Muslim they will say to you, Here, Allah, He delay the names to be behind Him, but He don't mean that they are the angels because it says there's no God but Him. Yeah, it says that really, but it says, and the angels and those who have knowledge. So when you have and you made them gods too. So you are right about the understanding. Yes, Abshir, what you want? You see in Arabic when you say I uh, me and uh, you, this is and here appear as wa. Actually here in translation is showing it. Allah and his angels and those endued with knowledge here it says standing with knowledge but that will not work why here it says qa'iman bil qist qa'iman is for one individual not for all not all not all for many I'm yawning. You believe it? For real? <laughs> this is not me laughing, by the way. This is Satan. He jumped inside my mouth. As the prophet, he said. <laughs> I'm really yawning. I'm getting sleepy. I did not sleep good. You know? I'm, I'm staying late every day. I will, I will try to go back and go in life on daytime so we can get more people to join us too. But, you know, for me, I'm trying to change... To go live in different timing so we can get more people to be with us because usually we go in the morning my time and that will make it maybe limited for people in certain time to be with us uh, why Allah uh, promised the Muslim green silk uh, very simple because when you live in the desert when you live in the desert green is uh, is is the be is a beauty you know what I mean if you ask somebody uh, he said to you, I went to uh, Dubai and I love the desert there. Why? Because he never saw a desert. So he find it amazing. But a person, an Arab person, he will feel disgusted from the desert. So if you ask me, I want to take a desert, I said, no way, you go. You know what I mean? So for a person who grow in the desert, a green is life. Because it is grass, it is shade, it is food, it is wealth, you know? So this is why everybody in the heaven of Allah will be wearing green. But in the same time, that <coughs> that is very stupid. Why? Because imagine you will be wearing one color for the rest of your life. Or, sorry, eternity. And what make it more funny, this green is made, green dress is made in Iran, Persian. You saw him, you debate with Muhammad Hijab. Okay, well, he destroyed me, as you say. Well, whatever, you know better. 
But as I know, within that debate, the guy who was asking me a question hanging up on me. <laughs> he said, did you see this woman? Did you say, suck on me? <laughs> I said, yes. I was caught in your prophet. I was caught in your stupid prophet. I said, <laughs> you see how he destroyed me? <laughs> and then he played a video of a woman. And the fact this woman, she is the one she was saying bad things about Jesus. So your, your, your friend is a perverted man. And then after that, he go around and he asked Muslim Sheikh to suck his wife tits. This is your friend. <laughs> You don't dare to debate me. None of you dare to debate me. This guy, he was so much intimidated to the point he prepared himself to play an audio, hang up, play an audio, hang up. He never debate me and he will never do. Never, ever. They are terrified. Very much intimidated. Did you ask yourself why all of them, they are willing to debate everybody? Suddenly, when it's come to me, no. not with me they fear the fear is so strong the tit boy uh, you know Muhammad he says a lot of things Muhammad was like a crazy mentally ill person who cannot shut up and the more he talked the more he make poo poo and we have to admit I'm really grateful for the stupidity of Muhammad like now Okay, can I suck your wife tits? Who, where this coming from? Where this is about? This is Muhammad saying a woman, she can give herself to an adult man to suckle her. So we as a Christians, I'm really grateful that the Muslims, they wrote all the stupid, crazy stuff Muhammad, he said. This guy is a certified donkey. He cannot keep his mouth shut. Even Aisha, she was ordering her nieces and her sisters to breastfeed anyone who want to enter upon her from men and they have to do it 10 times. So we really uh, appreciate the Muslims recording this for us so we can defeat Islam today. So we have to admit, the stupid Mohammedans preserve the words of the stupid prophet so the smart Christian will see them today. See how amazing it is? And then the stupid Mohammedan, they translate the stupid Muhammad. And then the stupid Mohammedan, they publish the stupid Muhammad words in website. And then the smart Christian, he opened the stupid Mohammedan website and he read it for them. And then the stupid Mohammedan, they deny what the stupid Muhammad said. And they say, this is Da'if. The then the smart Christian says, well, this is Al-Bukhari. Then the stupid Mohammedan, he go more in denial. He say, Al-Bukhari is Da'if too. <laughs> So you have to, you have to be really grateful for the stupidity of the followers of this religion. And let me show you. Even Muhammad he said to them, "Whoever write hadith, erase it." Just to show you how stupid this cult is, the followers are really out of their mind. Muhammad said, "The, the big donkey, don't take down anything from me," and he who took down anything from me except the Quran he should efface it can you believe the stupidity the guy he just told them don't write the hadith they said the prophet they wrote down the prophet said don't write the hadith <laughs> donkeys the guy he just told you don't write the hadith he just said don't write down the hadith uh, Alex, I don't know. I never saw one of them. However, you can search my videos and you will find thousands of Muslims leave Islam. You know, I don't see anyone leaving Islam after talking to Muhammad Hijab. Do you have one? I don't know. I have thousands. Watch my videos. Don't kill like your prophet. So, 
their stupid prophet he just said to them don't write the hadith it's like saying to somebody don't write in the wall they go and he write in the wall the prophet said don't write in the wall <laughs> it's a stupidity is amazing and imagine after he told them don't write the hadith they keep writing <laughs> Like, you're a stupid donkey. He just told you, don't write it. Efface it. Efface it. He knew. He knew he's a stupid. He knew that people are laughing at him at that time still. He don't want it to be remembered. He want to forget about it. And you idiot, you write it down. And now they wish that they never wrote a word. They wish. Wish, wish. Keep wish wishing, wish wish, wash a wisho, wash a washa, shush washishu, shasha shushi, shisha sha. Alhamdulillah. We Muslim, we preserve everything, including the fart of the Prophet. Imagine those people, the, the Prophet, he fought, they write, the Prophet, he fought three farts and then he coughed. <laughs> what the heck? Imagine in their book it says, that when the prophet he do poo poo, the earth open her mouth and swallow his poo poo. Like what? The earth open her mouth and swallow the poo poo. And then they write, the prophet his pee smell like musk. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> oh lord have mercy i better go and do poo, poo and see if i can convince the earth to swallow it i will not use it where the bathroom you know just let us see i mean give it a try maybe the miracle will happen i'm an arab at the end of the day and the muslim they say i am illiterate so, I mean, I have many uh, things will find me to be a prophet. You have to be, in, you know, illiterate and then Arab. And then uh, you have to be dumb. I will play dumb for some time. And in the top of that, uh, you have to be filthy. I did not take a shower for a year. Okay. Uh, and uh, I mean, uh, there's many. I'm close to be there. I will keep trying, I will keep trying. And and this is the sign to know that you are a prophet. If you do poo, poo and the earth is swallow your poo, poo that's mean you became a prophet. Okay? You do not need any proof. Just, you know, and that's it, you are there. Okay? Uh, can you please tell me the name of the Islamic movie about Muslim fighting over the poo, poo of Kamal? Yeah, I can. There's no need for the name. Let me find you the video. Hold on. Uh, <clears throat> imagine they are fighting over the poop of Aisha um, but let me see yeah, here we go. The, the movie is long, really, by the way. But uh, the part, here we go, this is the part. Okay, let me, we can play it actually here. And remember, this video, this movie is made by Muslims. This is not made by Christians or Jews or Hindus, you know. I will, I will give you the link. Those are the Muslims at that time, supposedly. ماذا تريدون من البصرة؟ أنا أشتري كل شيء. Let us see when they go to the Campbell thing. Hold on, let's move the video. 
Here we go. This is Aisha. Supposedly she is on the camel. This is this is the camel of Aisha. This camel he carry on his back only Muslims. He don't go to war except for jihad. This camel. This is the camel of Aisha. He don't scream except to worship Allah. Yeah, and he is even the hair of him is blessing. His breath is uh, is uh, is healing. This is all the about the camel. Yeah. Yeah, he's warning them to respect the camel, otherwise he will be punished. The one who take a, a hair or from, uh, I don't know what he say next, uh, he will be blessed. Here we go, the, the, the camel, he the, he dropped Pupu, and now the Muslims are fighting over the Pupu of the camel of Aisha. Let us go back a little bit. You see, they are holding his tail from the back because he will do Pupu soon. And now this guy, this Muslim, he got some pupu in his hand. He will sniff it and he will say, Allah, how great it is. He is saying to him, what are you doing with the pupu of the, of the camel? Smell it. It is more tasty than musk. More, way more. Oh. So anyway, this is the link. Let me pause for you. And you can save it. Remember, this is a video made by Muslims. You see, don't see Muslims going by millions to strike. This is made by them. So this is according to their books. So they cannot deny it. They cannot say it's not true. All right. No, 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 this is what they, this is what they believe, this is what they did. Uh, they used to fight over the shit of the, excuse my language, over the shit of the camel of uh, Aisha, and they believe it was a blessing. This is, if, if this is what they do to the shit of the camel of Aisha, what they do with the shit with Muhammad? <laughs> this is the shit of the camel, not the... <laughs> and even this is not the camel of Muhammad, this is the camel of the women who Muhammad used to sleep with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah horizon how are you my friend yeah welcome uh anyway I, I i leave you with this comedy and you can watch it and enjoy yourself see nice dreams i will go now sleep you know i will try to sleep and i will imagine myself like i'm in the desert and suddenly the aisha camel walk by and he drops some bombs around me Oh, smell unbelievable. Wow, so wonderful. Heaven, it's heaven. It's like more than musk. I mean, imagine if we can get like one ounce of this shit. I mean, not even one ounce. I mean, just little, little. How much blessing will be in your life? I mean, face it. Did you see the guy when he said, uh, hold on, hold on. Let's go, go back. Look here. It's more tasty than misk, <sighs> brother. It's really beautiful and it's very touchy. And with the shit of Muhammad, we leave you in peace. <laughs> Sorry to say, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> What a shitty cult. <laughs> Take care, people. I'm not going to say the name of the Lord after this. I wish you a great time. Have a great weekend.
But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 